This might be a little bit loud. I apologize. <laughs> Because Nick told me to. Yeah. Skip around the room. Skip around the room. Baby making music. Dangle clacks, dangle clacks. Wow. <clears throat> all right, hang on. Let me check. Dangle clacks, dangle clacks, dangle clacks. All right, here we go. <clears throat> all right. Yeah, that actually felt really good. Hello and welcome, you guys. Welcome and hello. Today is Thursday, which means that it is Mother. Trucking, okay, mother trucking vlog day. Yeah, we made it, you guys. We made it to another Thursday for another vlog, and I'm, I'm, I apologize. Last week I was suddenly sick. I was just suddenly sick. I was streaming here on Twitch on Wednesday, just playing Zelda, doing DLC shrines, having a great time. And in my head, I'm thinking, I don't feel great, but I'm just gonna keep going. You know, we're gonna power through this. That night, I was sitting on the couch, and we're just eating dinner, and I'm like, Casey, I don't, I don't feel good at all. I feel really bad right now. I'm going to go to bed. And so I just went to bed hoping that Thursday, Casey was trying to be positive. She's like, well, maybe you'll feel better tomorrow. You know, maybe, maybe tomorrow's going to be the day. It wasn't the day. Dude, I woke up last Thursday just sick as a dog. I think I had the flu. I'm not really sure. It was literally just a fever for three solid days and then a little bit of a head cold on Sunday and then Monday's here and now we're just jamming into this week but welcome you guys thank you so much for being here I see you guys there in the chat Mr. Tyler 1996 the late night vape show checking in from the UK the Jedi the sexy king the Addy Toonie J Blaze Randy's here the other Reds here Georgia boys here Bud Cool Ford is here hell yes welcome you guys Thank you so much for being here tonight. I think I've made the executive decision that we're not going to have the chat on the screen the whole stream anymore. I think that works in some cases, kind of for Zelda really only, maybe on the build stream just so I can get direct feedback quicker. But on the, on the vlog, I find it to be a distraction personally. And so... For now, we're just going to leave the we're just going to leave the chat off of the stream. But let me give you guys a real quick one quick rundown as far as what's coming up tonight. Here's my terrible vlog notes, but we're going to start tonight off with a beer. I have to apologize to Poon Sauce McNasty, but we are going to start tonight off with a beer. Uh, we're going to do. Uh, what I've been vaping, what you've been vaping. Uh, we have Grim Green reviews a vape thing he's never even tried before tonight. We're going to have some news. We're going to have a contest. We got a whole mess of mail. I can clearly tell that we're going to be running long just from even looking at this. We've got a whole mess of mail. I'd like to try to set something up from the mail because that's a thing we used to do on the stream. And I don't know, we just kind of just got away from it. We just kind of got away from it and I'd like to bring it back. So if there's something in the mail worth setting up, ah, maybe we'll set it up. Thank you so much, Earn, for subscribing. Really appreciate that very much. And you know, I, here, let me throw this on here as well. Of course, we're gonna have a retro vaping and of course we're gonna have a liquid tasting and, and it's gonna be a full on action packed vlog. We might run a little bit long tonight. We might run a little bit long in the news section. Just because there's been a lot of stuff going on, you guys. We got CDC data. We got Prop 31 in California. We got FDA whistleblowers. Think about that. FDA whistleblowers. It's pretty exciting. I mean, it's pretty exciting. There's a lot of bad things going on right now and happening, you know, in the vape world. But uh, we've got some FDA whistleblowers, so... Look, it can't be all that bad. I do need to hydrate real quick. How long have I been talking? Four minutes, just straight. All right, let me talk. Let me drink real fast. Yeah, 
severely lacking in hydration lately, and that's no good. Yeah, I do have a retro vaping tonight. It's not super exciting, but it's a retro vape that I've wanted to do for months, for months, maybe even longer than that. Maybe even, when was it? In, was it in 2021 or 2020 where we spent a vlog every week opening up a new box of retro vape stuff? For some reason, I want to say that was in 2020. I spotted both of these things during that time, and I thought, "What? Well, I'm gonna. That's what I'm gonna vape. That's gonna be a retro vape someday. That's gonna be a retro vape someday." And today, today, my friends, is that day. Uh, it's not quite a vlog yet, just because we don't have a beer going. So what I'm gonna do right now is we are absolutely gonna get into some hot beer action. Okay. Well, the beer that we're having tonight, and I put this in the fridge on the Wednesday Patreon stream. Poonsauce, I wish you were there. I wish you would have reminded me on Wednesday, but I threw this in the fridge. This is from Petacolis Brewing Company. This is the Duke in peach flavor. That's right. This is a peach flavored beer, and I can drink this peach flavored beer because I I'm an adult and I have a little card that the government gives me that says that I can drive and it says that I can buy beer. It also says that I can buy weed. It also says that I can buy cigarettes. It also says I can buy uh, vape stuff. Not unless you're in, if, unless you're in California and then you can't because that card just isn't good enough, but it is good enough for a peach Duke, the John Dorian five tap method. Let's see what, let's see what happens. Yeah, I'm going to be pouring this into, boom, look at this pint glass. What's yours? Bull uh, Bull and Bush 71 Brewery. Shout out to uh, Matt Sewer Rug. Uh, was this, was this from, this came from Matt Sewer Rug. I believe it came from Matt Sewer Rug. Before, I also want to say Wee Baby Seamus had something to do with this. So It is, right? It's, it is marketed to kids. That's the only explanation for having peach. There's, li listen. There's no other reason to have a flavor in a product other than appealing to kids. That is, period. California has just established that. I, for one, I don't think California took it far enough. I'm going to be uh, starting up a, uh, a movement to ban flavored alcohol in the state because I don't think Prop 31 went far enough. I think we need to go farther and ban more stuff. I've had the Duke before. I have not had the Duke in peach before. This is a nice uh, 12. Oh, look at that. Perfection has been achieved. This is a nice 12 percenter. They, they classify it as a barley wine. Adults clearly hate flavors. I don't know how I can explain this to you any better, Gunny. <laughs> Adults clearly, clearly hate flavors. They hate them. The Duke, the Duke Peach doesn't even sell that well, you know. And 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 the people they do to, they do sell it to, kids. Yeah, <laughs> kids. It's just for kids. Uh, anyway, I, I'm really excited to get into this. I like the Duke. Shout out to Lee, not the real Gerard Butler, my homeboy from Texas, for sending this to me. Cheers, you guys. Cheers. Let's have some beer. Yeah, it's awesome. That's incredible. Uh, it, it, the Duke in general has always reminded me. I mean, I guess it is a barley wine. It reminds me so much of Sticky Monkey for some reason. It's got like a bourbony, like alcohol forward flavor. It's got a, a, the peach in it is like a squishy, juicy, fresh peach. It's not like a candied jello peach it is a it is a fresh fresh peach big body big mouthfeel big flavor there's a it almost tastes like there's a little bit of like spiciness or something in this it, it that is a barley wine as well poon sauce mcnasty they're both barley wines 
maybe that's why maybe that's why I'm getting strong vibes of uh, of Sticky Monkey from this. But it's got like that alcohol forward, big body, which I'm so surprised because the flavor of this beer doesn't match like the visual of this beer. From a visual standpoint, this beer just looks like it, a beer. I don't know. It looks like a, a Bass Pale Ale or something like that. The flavor is off the charts good, very alcohol forward, peachy, rich. It tastes spicy to me for some reason. It tastes spicy. There's like not like a, a pepper spice, but there's like a spice to this. It does look like apple juice. Mess you up like apple juice too. This is delightful. I think I have no peach liquids right now. That's kind of unbelievable to me. I'm usually, I'm like, I'm a peach guy. I like peaches. I used to vape that Smacks peach. What was it called? It was like peach, peaches and cream, but they used to call it something else. And then they had to change the name. It's like, it is Jay Blaze. It's a very, it's like a peachy cinnamon. No, don't even trip, Lee. I'm just sitting here just just savoring this. Just drinking it down, just savoring it. This is a this is a truly delicious beer. This beer is this motion. It's like chef's kiss. Completely delicious, Lee. Thank you. And we're halfway through a nice 12 percenter, so should be good times. The, the peach is good. The peach is like a, a, it's a perfect balance of peach. It's not too peach. Have I said peach too many times? Lick it. There it is. Lick it by smacks used to be my jam. Peach all over that joint. God was so good. Just so good. Let's see what I compare this with. I think the only logical thing that I compare this with, I think it's going to do really well, is the plum job. It's the Bogan Tobacco. It's the Bogan Tobacco Plum Job. That's great. That's great. They don't necessarily like complement each other very well, and one doesn't really set off the other's flavor or anything like that, but they meld really well together. You get a nice mix of like plum tobacco, peach duke, peach barley wine it's pretty nice it's not it's not my favorite slow down i know it's good it the problem is lee it's good <clears throat> yo yo raymond hope you're doing good i know you you're ray buildable everybody has uh 13 names on the internet that's what i've discovered I'm trying to track down some of my patrons addresses keep looking for names that don't exist. I keep looking for other names that do exist, but I don't know their real names. It's it's a hoot. It's a good time. That's freaking delightful. That's freaking delightful. I could finish this beer literally right now. Literally right now, but I won't. I won't. I can't I can't possibly. Um and speaking of Sam Bogan, uh, he got uh, he got a strike recently. Uh, I want to give a, a shout out to Vaping Bogan. Go show him some love on other social medias, on his Instagram or Facebook or something like that, because I was streaming Zelda last night, and Sam Bogan just pops in my chat, and he's like, I got a fucking strike. What? So I paused my stream a little bit, and uh, I talked to Sam for a little bit, and it turns out that smack dab in the middle of his stream, he was streaming like a live build sesh, and right in the middle of his stream, the stream just cuts and is gone, and then he gets a warning, he gets a pop-up that says, you got a strike, right in the middle of his stream. And of course, it was on a really old video, and so he's in YouTube jail for a week, um, and that sucks. I hate that feeling. I hate being in YouTube jail and I hate not being able to communicate to your YouTube subscribers like what happened. They just assume that you that you ditched them for a week and, and it's bullshit um, and it sucks. So, you know, I, I hope you're doing good, Sam. And, and that just sucks. The strike feeling is just God, the worst. There, there's not a worse feeling. You know, I'm sure there is a worse feeling. <laughs> But for a vape YouTuber, 
there's not a worse feeling. That little pop-up that you get with the little graphic that says your video has been removed for violating our, our uh, consumer guidelines, you just go, oh my God. You feel it in your gut, you just hate it. It's a, it's a horrible, horrible feeling, horrible feeling. So I don't know, maybe we'll see, uh, maybe we can get Sam on Twitch. Maybe we can get some other vapors over here on Twitch. <laughs> I'm so sick of YouTube. I'm so sick of YouTube, Vicky Benji. Uh, I spent today, uh, apart from vlog prepping, just going through the spreadsheet, editing videos, editing videos, editing videos. I'm trying to edit as, as many videos as I possibly can in, in a single day. But uh, hopefully, you know, I had some, I, I kind of wanted to make an announcement, but I don't necessarily want to make this announcement right now. I just want to put this in your ear to the people that are here right now is I know people spend money on Twitch. I know, I know people spend money on Twitch to be here. And I just want to let you guys know that I'm going to be on Twitch at least through the end of the year. I'm going to do all my streaming for the next two months right here. I'm, I'm kind of tossing around the idea and I would love to get your feedback on this as well. If you're watching this on Twitch, let me know. If you're watching this on YouTube, hashtag replay crew, let me know in the comments down below. I'm considering taking the vlog back to YouTube at the start of the new year. But I don't know quite what that looks like because I don't want to I don't want to fuck with people who have spent money on Twitch to be here. And I don't want to I guess that's it. I don't really want to mess with people who have been on Twitch and have spent money on Twitch to be here because I'm still going to be here on Twitch. We're doing build streams here. We're doing Zelda here. I'm trying to think of another stream for Twitch, but we might. I might move the vlog back to YouTube. I don't know. It's just something I'm considering, and I would love anybody and everybody's feedback. One thing that a lot of people have recommended to me is multi-streaming, right? Send the, twi send the stream to Twitch and YouTube. It can stream on both platforms. And I go, okay, well, well, okay, that seems like a good idea. Twitch is superior. <laughs> Twitch is superior. Gunny has spoken. I kind of feel the same way. Um, but I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I'm a little bit torn. I'm just a little bit torn on it right now. But any, any feedback you guys have for me, please let me know your, conf your, your preferences. Your preferences. Otherwise, we'll just keep everything on Twitch. We'll keep the replays on YouTube, and then that's just how we're going to go. That's definitely how we're going to go, at least for the rest of the year. Just let me know. And so, Restream, right? Yeah, Freister. Fre Fre ha happy to see you here, Freister. Yes, Restreaming. People have suggested this. Put the stream on both. Stream to Twitch and to YouTube. Wh what I don't want to do is break up the chat because I feel that you guys are one of the components of this vlog that makes the vlog work. People like coming here and hanging out for a little bit because you guys are so welcoming, so fun, so personable, so funny, so goof aroundable, you know? And so I don't want people to only be chatting on Twitch or people to only be chatting on YouTube. And I don't want people chatting on YouTube going, where's so-and-so, where's so-and-so? Oh, they watch on Twitch. I'm going to go to that chat room and watch on Twitch so that I can chat with these people. I don't really want to divide my chat up like that. So I want, I'm committed to sticking to one platform so that we can all get together in the same place, have the same chat, have the same experience, have the same stream, you know, rather than, than splitting it up. So, okay. Th that's just things I'm thinking. That's just things I'm thinking out loud. I have one more update. I still am going to do a big ass Casa giveaway. We're going to do a big raffle. I haven't forgot about this, and I hope that you guys have not forgot about this, but there is a big box in my guest bedroom. It's got mech mods, it's got toppers, it's got RDAs, it's got RTAs, it's got multiple billet boxes in it, it's got multiple billet box bridges in it, it's going to have liquid in it, it's going to have cotton in it, it's going to be a big, valuable raffle box. And that is still a thing that's going to come up. We're going to do a raffle to raise money for CASA. That's it. We do fundraisers for CASA every so often. I feel like it's been a little bit too long since we've had a, uh, 
since we've had a fundraiser for Casa, and so uh, I'd like to do it. Someone was asking about my Patreon in the chat. It's just Patreon slash Grim Green. In fact, here I could put it in the chat right here for anybody who's asking for the Patreon. You can jump on. It's a great. It's a great group of people. Unbelievable, really, group of people. And we we stream twice a week on Instagram. Uh, we do constant boosh box giveaways. We do uh, Discord, uh, and we have Discord hangs every Thursday after the stream. We all hang out till all hours of the night, and we just we we consume cannabis, and we have and we drink beers, and we just we discuss sandwiches sometimes. You know. It's just good times. It's just good times. So if anybody wants to join up, hey, no pressure. Hey, love you. Hey, no pressure. Anyway, that's the, I think that's the last thing that I wanted to mention at the beer segment. Okay, yeah, let's go. Uh, hell, a couple more things. Uh, I want to give a special thank you and shout out to Vicky Benji. I hope you're staying safe. Vicky Benji, she's dealing with a hurricane right now, a tropical storm. I just want Vicky Benji, I want Vicky to be safe. I want Benji to be safe. I want both of them to be safe. How you doing, One Wheel McGee? Appreciate you being here. So Vicky Benji, this is for you. Hey, I love you. I really hope you're staying safe. Staying the most safe from that storm. Natural disasters and storms and earthquakes and... That shit's an act of God. That's out of your control. So I hope you're staying safe. Shit. Hell yeah. Shed time. Is, is that you, Nick? <laughs> Shed time is a mother trucker. All right. I appreciate that. Nicole is finally gone now. Okay. I'm st still, I just, I want you to be safe, Vicky Benji. I think about you. Um, and then I guess the last thing that I wanted to mention right now is today's my uh, today's my wedding anniversary. You know, uh, November tenth, uh, I got married to my, I mean, incredible human being of a wife, Casey Pickle, on uh, November tenth, two thousand eighteen, and it's been four really spectacular years. You know what I mean? Plenty of ups and downs, but like, you know. I can't, I can't help but gush about my wife. She's, she's my best friend. I'm madly, deeply head over heels in love with her, uh, since the, since the first day I met her, including until, until right now, she's at work right now. I'm at work right now. So we're not really celebrating our anniversary. We don't ever really celebrate our anniversary on the day. In fact, in 2019, we celebrated our wedding anniversary in, uh, Washington DC at the rally. The very first vape at the Capitol rally was on our anniversary. I knew I had to attend. She knew I had to attend. So she flew with me to DC to go to the rally with me, like on our anniversary. That's, I couldn't, I couldn't ask, I couldn't ask for a, a more loving, more supporting, uh, honestly, funnier wife. She cracks me up on like a daily a daily basis. And I just love the shit out of her. And so I wanted to share a, a couple pictures from our wedding. How about that? How about just, here's a real quick, uh, a, a real quick getting to know Grim Green. So, uh, it is my wedding anniversary and I just said a, a bunch of very nice things about my wife. She, she is just spectacular. She is just I don't know. I, I I have a hard time uh, even just putting into words uh, what Casey Pickle means to me. Like it, it's it's next level. Like it's next level. You've been married for 25 years, Mallory. Congratulations to you. I also know that today is another anniversary, Mr. Retton Delia. Congratulations to you guys. But uh, so we got married in San Diego, November 10th, 2018. And we got married at a really cool little boutique mid century modern hotel called the Pearl Hotel in San Diego. Uh, Google it, go there. It's awesome. It's a really cool little, like I said, it's a mid-century like boutique hotel. And we got married around a big like vintage looking kidney shaped um, swimming pool in front of a big wall of succulents. And we got married in front of a swimming pool and we had everything, the reception and the wedding all in this one area. It was, inc it was an incredible night. It was the, f the most fun party night literally of, of all time. And so what we did at the very end, 
I just wanted to share three pictures. These are three, three, just some three random pictures from my wedding. What we did at the very end of the night when the reception was over and everybody's drunk and there's still music playing is we just decided to jump in the pool and we invited literally our, everybody attending the wedding could jump in the pool. Just, just jump into, you've been to the Pearl Ranger, Rusty? Dude, it's so cool. It is so freaking cool. So we decided to jump in the pool. So this is a picture of my wife and I just jumping straight into the pool, fully clothed, uh, fake faux wedding dress there. <laughs> and uh, we just jumped into the pool and it was the most awesome, fun time of all time. We jumped in the pool. Look at this great picture. This is Dwayne. <laughs> So we invited literally all of our guests to jump in the swimming pool. And that's Dwayne. That's my buddy Morgan. And you know Dwayne. <laughs> I love this picture. I love this picture on such a whole other level. Uh, and that's Dwayne jumping in the pool uh, with my good buddy Morgan jumping in the pool. And, and then at the end of the night, like literally everybody was in the pool. And as everybody's getting out of the pool, they have a big, big uh, like projector screen there. So we watched Star Wars. We put on Star Wars A New Hope while everybody was warming up from the pool with like towels and, and like robes. And we were like drinking hot chocolates and eating wedding cake and watching Star Wars. It was an incredible night. It, it, it was truly an incredible night. And then this is the last picture I'm going to share. This is, uh, you know, I think, I believe we're singing uh, Bon Jovi. I believe we're singing uh, Bon Jovi living on a prayer in, in this shot. Uh, that's Casey and I singing. And then uh, this gentleman right here with his head back and you kind of see the glasses. That's Casey's dad, RP. And uh, yeah, I think I'm pretty sure we're singing Bon Jovi uh, living on a prayer because I don't know. That's just what this looks like. That's just what that feels like. We're singing. Oh, halfway there. Wow. Living on a prayer. So it's been nice today reminiscing uh, about just one of the best days ever. Like I still think of that. I still think of that party. I still think of like people hit me up and like, dude, your wedding rules. I'm like, I know it was awesome. Do we have such a fun time? And uh, I love my wife and today's my anniversary. So thank you everybody for the, uh, for the anniversary wishes over there on the Discord. Um, I think I saw some Super Chats come in. So now that we're three sheets to the wind, let's go check on some Super Chats. Running long. <laughs> Except they're not called Super Chats over here. They're called Hella Chats and everybody knows it. Listen, uh, looks like there was some... Uh, some cheering going on. Jedi, I appreciate you, pimp. Wired Talk with Big G. It is vlog day. Hell yeah. Thank you for that resubscription. Uh, and uh, let's see. We had uh, the Vapor Jedi. We had a uh, very, very boring doing some uh, congratulations cheering. And then we had Mrs. Bagpipes. That's very gracious of you, Barbara. Appreciate you. Happy anniversary, Casey and Nick. Smartest decision you ever made, Nick, was marrying that lovely lady. Why she said yes, I have no idea. LOL. Love you both. Ha, ha, ha. I know why she said yes. Thank you. I mean, thank you so much. Seriously, appreciate you. I'm feeling the love today. I'm feeling the love today. Even though I didn't really get to hang out with my wife today, um, we, we get to hang out all weekend, and, and it'll be great. And I've already consumed too much beer. So, uh, there you go. So, uh, yeah, that's today. That's today for me. And, uh, feels good, man. Four years, you know, we're well on our way. The four year anniversary gift is supposed to be like fruits or flowers or something like that. Um, I haven't, I haven't got Casey, a, a, an anniversary gift yet. You know, we've been busy. Look, we've been busy. She's been busy. We haven't really exchanged gifts or anything like that, but we have the whole weekend to celebrate. So anyway, thank you so much, guys. Let's jump into, uh, let's jump straight over to this. Can we jump straight over to this? America, this is you. Uh, it's Assignment America time. It's Assignment Planet Globe time is what uh, what time it actually is. Oh, I, I didn't get any of these onto the uh, 
into the software. That's spectacular. <laughs> well, I got an email here from D. We're going to call you Debt Trick. We're going to call you the Debt Trick. Oh, his name's Derek. He says, uh, my name is Derek, and this is me and my wife, Kayla's Vape Setup. Where did you go? Debt Trick. Oh, here he is. Debt Trick. There it is. He says, this is mine and my wife's a vape setup. She has a smoke R kiss with the Geek Vape P tank on her person, but we both picked up vaping again about a month or so after years of smoking the stink sticks. Uh, majority of the things I have are older, but still work fantastic. Thank you for all you do. And thank you for having one of the best channels, in my opinion, on YouTube. Thank you, Derek. Damn it, man. Thank you. That means a lot to me. That's definitely a Voopoo. That's definitely an uh, Asmodus. That's an Asmodus something or other. Drag S, Pulse, Hella Liquids. Derek. <laughs> Derek, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, this one comes from Brazil. This is Enzo from Brazil. Hang on. I'm loading these in here as we do this. I didn't prepare very well. You know, you sit here, I sit here and I sit here and I sit here like 10 minutes before the vlog is going and I'm just running the checklist in my head of every segment, running the checklist in my head. This, this, okay, I got that. I look and I verify and sometimes I'll like hold things just to make sure I have them. I'm like, okay, this I have, this, this is here, this is here. I'm good to go, I'm good to go. So I'm just sitting back here on Twitter for like the last five minutes before the stream, but really, I should have been losing Assignment America in here. Enzo from Brazil says, uh, Vape on BR. I, is, is, is Enzo, are you here tonight? I am cigarette free since November 2021. Thanks to vaping after more than 30 years of those coffin nails. I love watching your stream since I discovered it. Thank you for everything you're doing for the vaping community, not only in the U.S., but worldwide. My name is Enzo. I live in Brazil, but I am Italian. Very nice to meet you, Enzo. Here's my small setup for tonight's stream. A Riva DNA 250C and Eclipse with a Jam Monster Strawberry. Man after my own heart. I love a good strawberry. Oh, he's got a college. Oh, that's the college DNA 60 with the Bica V8 RTA on top. Has anyone heard of the Bica? B-Y-K-A V8. The Bica V8. I'm just going to type this into the chat. In case anybody has heard of this RTA, not ever heard of that with Elixir 71. Delicious. All the best to you and the wife from here. Hashtag Grim Green Army. Hashtag, that's right, power bomb the world, Enzo. Thank you, Enzo. I appreciate you sending those in. Uh, this last assignment, America, Tim Fox. Tim. Let's read from Tim real quick while I throw some of these pictures up here. He says, hello, my name is Tim, and I started smoking cigarettes when I was 11 or 12. By the time I was 18, I was probably two packs a day. I tried vaping with a cig alike and then egos and all that stuff, but it wasn't just enough. It wasn't enough for him to quit. He says over the years, he thought as vapes is getting better and better, and he would, and I would get them for probably four years I was a dual user. Well, about four years ago, I quit cigarettes for about three months and all I was doing was vaping. But one th then one day I was having a rough day. So I stopped at the gas station and got a two pack of BLK cigars. Well, that was a mistake because before I knew it, I was smoking 10 cigars a day. But I'm proud to say Thanksgiving this year, I will be one year without any combustible tobacco. If it wasn't for vapes and YouTubers like you, I would still be smoking. So I want to say thanks. I'm mainly using AIOs now, but here's what I have collected over the years. Over the years, keeping in mind, I mean, this is a great example, Tim Fox, of everybody's quitting process, everybody's quitting path is different. It's just different. Yours is different from mine. Slaposaurus was different from Angry Angry Blake. Lurker Jerry was different from J Blaze Coils. You might have tried different mods, different products, different toppers, different wicks, different liquids, different nicotine strengths of different liquids. Tim Fox has a lot, a lot of gear. And keeping in mind that Tim Fox says that he's only been cigarette free. I mean, I'm not saying only. 
but he has been cigarette free since uh, 2017. And he has collected a vast amount of vape gear. Couldn't even tell you all the toppers in there, including a jewel, including a jewel, including multiple plot pods, including a pal, including it was a, that looks like a, a pioneer, including that looks like a top coiler, like an Artemis style, plenty of sub tanks. But wait, Tim, there is more. Tim Fox for the win. Look at all of these that he has. Multiple orchids, multiple lost vape bangers, mech mods, dual 18650 devices. That's a Kanger NE box down there. Some other rando stuff in there. But wait, there is more. A smock, there's a clutch in there. There's the, the deviate. Uh, there's some Aegis's in there. There's a moon box in there. Lots of smock stuff, lots of sub tanks, lots of, there's a Vupu drag in there. Gear. The dude's got gear coming out of his eyeballs. Gear coming out of his eyeballs. And even then, even having gear coming out of his eyeballs, it was still like a process. He would go back and forth and back and forth and have bad days and smoke and and then vape for long periods of time and then have bad days and Start smoking cigarettes and put it on a clutch, Duchess. <laughs> Jerk. But that's the point, you know? Everybody has their own journey. And for a lot of people, you could just get a Cali burn. And to Dave, the smoker, he's just going to go, oh, this is great. I love this. I quit immediately. And then to other people, they're going to go, nope, I, I need a pod. That didn't work. I got a different pod. That didn't work. I bought a sub tank. That didn't, I didn't like that. I bought RDAs. I didn't enjoy those. I bought RTAs. I didn't enjoy those. I bought borrow boxes. It wasn't until I bought a stubby with a, you know, what the hell ever mission orbit in it that I finally was able to quit smoking cigarettes. You know, everybody has a path and it's not up to us to disparage anybody's path. Please don't do that. If someone who smokes cigarettes is trying to not smoke cigarettes, encourage them to try any product that they that they can possibly get their hands on. Even if it's a pod, even if it's a disposable, even if it's a stubby, even if it's a, you know, I always say it, stacked tube mech. Stacked tube mech. And uh, yeah, I think that's going to wrap it up. Wait, there was one more from Tim Fox. Believe it or not. Oh, there was another one. Oh, can I put these up here? Yeah. With Tofo? Nope. All right. Well, shouldn't have put that up there. It says com on that packaging. And I just said the web address. So now I'm going to have to edit this vlog even further. Let me get a timestamp uh, about 42 minutes and 58 seconds in. All right. I'm going to have to remember that. Great. So that's what you guys have been vaping. Real quick, there's only a few things. I have a, a good amount of stuff on my desk, but it's only a few things that I've been vaping. First and foremost, this has been never left my hand. This is the Tripod 2 in mouth to lung with a Proxima with a 12 milligram deep cuts on the inside, 15 watts. Mm -hmm. 12 milligram deep cuts, guava jelly on the inside. It's the mouth to lung liquid. freaking delicious. This has been in heavy, heavy rotation. It's just a smock G Priv 4. It's nothing super crazy fancy. It's just a dual 18650 mod I happen to really like. Valkyrie Mini on the top, as you saw, with Bogan. Plum job on the inside. Stellar. What a stellar vape. And speaking of Bogan, it's a stubby with the stubby RTA on the inside. Oleg drip tip. Uh, Lunar Sweet Mango from Indonesia is on the inside of this. Kind of can't get enough. It's good. That's just good. I've been keeping this going because I just really like the Mission Astro. I don't necessarily love the Billy Billy bridge on the inside. Eh, it's a little bit fiddly. It's a little bit weird. And then ultimately the vape payoff isn't incredible. The airflow gets a little bit rough. 
gets a little bit turbulent. Thankfully, the flavor is good. Thankfully, that flavor is good because it doesn't have a whole hell of a lot going for it. Uh, Pulse point five. I think I'm going to have my review finally, finally my review for the Pulse Point 5 up tomorrow on YouTube if you want to check it out. It's a long one, but I needed to spend time with the Pulse Point 5. Vessel Bridge is on the inside of this. Oleg Drip Tip. Come on. I love that. That just looks cool as hell on there. Big, tall, dorky. And then lastly can't even show you this. It's just a thing. I'm going to, it's in my fist right here. I'll give you a hint though. Actually, I can't, I can't give you a hint. I'm just going to vape it. The Alexa RDA is on top. Lunar Sweet Mango is on the inside of this. And here's a hint. What's that? Hasn't left my hand. Hasn't left my hand. And if we're going to talk about pods, look, it's really like two things. Smock Novo 2X, Cali Burn D pod. It's been these two bangers just jamming on those pods like crazy. But that's what I've been vaping. That's what you have been vaping as well, Assignment America. I can neither confirm nor deny this, Vicky Benji. But that's for you to make your own mind up. Hey, coming soon. Hashtag coming soon from Grim Green. This beer rules. Lee, I could see how you would drink like like three to four of these just one after the other. When I go take a bio break later, I'm going to throw another one in the fridge for later in the hangs. So that we can get real schwaist, real schwaisty in, <laughs> in the hangs, real schwaisty. Uh, okay, so I don't think I saw any hella chats come in. Let's see. There's never, uh, there's never any obligation for any sort of uh, hella chats or anything like that. But I do appreciate it. Uh, guava geck, guava, guava geck says, uh, chit. Congratulations, Grim uh, Green. Your videos got me off the death sticks. I want to say hello and thank you for saving my lungs, Grimmy. Hell yeah. Dude, four bananas for my anniversary. Ugh, thank you. And thank you for letting me be a part of your quit journey. You know, I feel uh, it's incredibly rewarding for me. And I, I feel an overwhelming sense of satisfaction when someone says, I watched your XYZ videos and that helped me quit smoking or I, I watched this video and that helped me quit smoking or I watched your vlogs and your community helped me quit smoking. That's everything, dude. That's everything. That's everything. Thank you. Tribal Buddha. Oh, you got the hella chat of the beast. That's my favorite thing. Uh, remember Marine Corps birthday today. Hoorah! Hoorah! Hell yeah! It's wait, it's the Marine. Remember Marine Corps' birthday today? Like, is today the birthday of the Marine Corps? Tribal Buddha, is today the birthday of the Marine Corps? Because I have no birthdays written down for this week. If anybody has a birthday, I'm just gonna write down the Marines. Like as a general, like the Marines. Which, if it's the Marines' birthday, then definitely I'm going to sing happy birthday to the Marines. My Uncle Greg was a Marine. I had to go to his graduation from uh, whatever, the West Point Military Academy when I was like eight years old. It was good times. Uh, Luke Vader, that's very gracious of you. Back at it again. Yuck foo tube. <sighs> that's right, yuck foo tube. Although I don't want to talk too badly about YouTube. Like... I realize they're kind of the bad guys. They're kind of the villains in this a little bit, but I I can't be so cynical as to think that YouTube is doing it deliberately. It, it's so much easier and makes so much more logical sense in my head that YouTube just doesn't get it. Just that YouTube is ignorant, that YouTube is 
inefficient, that YouTube is incapable of applying their rules fairly or evenly. That's the, that's, that's the gripes that I have with YouTube. Not that I think that there's a big, you know, conspiracy uh, against nicotine or I, I just think they're dumb and they don't know what they're doing and they don't know how to categorize these videos and they don't know their own rules and they don't know how to apply their own rules evenly to content creators. I'd much rather prefer that they're ignorant than malicious. I can't, I can't, I can't be so cynical as to think they're doing deliberately, but I'll still say yuck food tube. I'll say yuck food tube into the ground. Uh, Sewer rug, that's very gracious of you. Yo yo and salutations. Happy anniversary to the greens. Happy vlog day to all. And happy to see so many ex smokers in the chat here for the stream, no matter the platform. Matt, I, I wish I could clone Matt. I wish I could have like 50 sewer rugs in my, in my audience, in my Patreon. So many ex smokers here. So many ex smokers. And I know that smoker isn't the preferred nomenclature, but I think in the terms of saying you're an ex smoker, I think there's nothing cooler than that. Nothing cooler than that, Frank Neal. Appreciate you, Frank. I just want to say yo yo Nick and the cool kids. Dude, Frank, yo yo to ya. You should have you should have got a package probably maybe today in the mail, tomorrow. It's coming tomorrow for you, Frank. It's coming tomorrow. Uh, let's jump in quickly to another segment because uh, I advertised on social media that this stream was going to include more series vaping. So let's go. Grim Green reviews a vape thing that he's never even tried before. <laughs> yep, we're going to review a vape thing right now that I have never even tried before, never even tried before, but it is a series device from what I understand. I'm gonna get out some dual 18650s here, hang on. I got some brand new Ohm Life Ohm Tech batteries. I recently went through and replaced every battery that was in my collection, all old like, Dude, I had old like Sony VTC4 batteries, like old Sony VTC5 batteries. They had been going for like five years, six years, seven years. They're just old. They need to go away. So I replaced literally all, all of my batteries. And what we're going to be uh, reviewing that I've never even tried before, I think Bogan, I think Sam did a video for this recently, but I picked this up. This is no good. Why is my head so big? Why? Why? I'm going to hide myself back here. Yeah. I'm not centered. Yeah. This is the saga. It's a saga. It's songs for the deaf. You can't even hear it. No, Queens of the Stone Age, anybody? I picked this up at uh, the Dubai Vape Show. Vapor's Cloud was there. I got to hang out and talk to Brian from Vapor's Cloud. What a great dude. He gives a shit, and, and I love that. But this is a saga. This is a uh, dual 18650 series mod, and it, it gives me strong... Strong, noisy cricket vibes. Strong, strong, noisy cricket vibes. It's a little bit, a little bit more handleable. You know, it's a little bit bigger. The buttons in a completely different spot. But I personally really like this. Pew, 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 pew. Nice hand feel. O-ring on top. Five ten threading. Let's see if that's adjustable. Is this five ten pin adjustable? Yes. All right, so we have an adjustable non, is it non-spring loaded? Holy shit. Fully adjustable, non-spring loaded. Ah, non-spring loaded, dual 18650s. Is this marked? Is the sled marked? 
Yeah, it's not. That's crazy. Oh, it is. Okay, 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 okay. It is. It is. I'm wrong. It's 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 late. It's marked. Can you see way down there? How close can I get? Can you see way down in there? Yeah, there's a positive and a negative. The X is the positive. The slash is the negative. So thankfully, weeks ago, we set up this monstrosity. And, and I've just been keeping it on my desk. I've been using it. It's a double 21700 stacked tube mech with a Kennedy RDA on top. And all I really want is the Kennedy. I'm going to get these batteries out of here. I'm going to put this tube mech over by the other tube mechs. My tube mech collection. I'm going to put these on the charger real quick. All right. Now, now we can actually vape this. So negative, positive, it's series. So this is essentially the same as stacking batteries on top of each other. In a series mech, these would be touching. And then when your pin touches the bottom, it discharges the load of both batteries right directly into your atomizer. Directly into your atomizer. This I, tribal Buddha. I was thinking this is like a, a tribal Buddha style vape. You know, it it might not be quite as big as a tribal Buddha style vape, but it is a tribal Buddha style vape. Two eighteen six fifties go right in. Like I said, brand new, brand new home tech batteries. It looks like this part doesn't matter. This doesn't have a positive or negative. This is just a contact that acts as if they were stacked. So when you press the button, it's going to discharge one battery into this contact, which is going to discharge it into the next battery, which is going to discharge it into, yeah, your topper, your mouth hole. Not exactly sure how this goes back on. Simple enough. This should be easy peasy. Let's put this Kennedy on here. See how it goes? Those are my coils. Yes. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, that's a thing of beauty right there. So let me get my little towel. We're gonna wipe this, wipe this all up so it looks a little a little bit more presentable. You can never really get these clean, can you? It's always a little bit of a little bit of liquid, no matter where you go. Is the OG Saga 21700? Okay, then then this is the Saga Mini. This is the Saga Mini. It does come with extra screws, extra spring, an extra contact in the bottom, an extra O-ring for the top, extra contact pins, a flat contact pin, screw-in contact pin, all sorts of spares. All sorts of spares, everything you need to know. And I just want to preface this by saying... Don't vape series if you don't want to vape series. You know, it's like series is a pretty intense way to vape, in my opinion. Oh, that's six milligram. Hang on. Where's my three? There it is. Three milligram mangoes going in here. Series is a, it's serious, man. It's eight and a half volts. With batteries fresh off the charger, it's about eight and a half volts delivered unregulated right into your face. And so I like to build at least to a point three, at least to a point three, if not higher, if not higher than a point three. This is going to unload eight and a half volts into my face. So cheers. Here you go. Kick ass. That rules. No lack of power, zero lack of power on this. Kind of see, oh, it's, it's pretty palmable. It's pretty palmable right there. And that fire button for your thumb, man, I mean, it's ergonomic as hell. It's boring. You know, it does look like a noisy cricket. It's just an oval. It's just a stainless steel, stainless steel. It's just an 
anodized aluminum oval. That's it with a mech button. But it's a small series. Like that's why I liked the noisy cricket. It was a small series banger. This is a small series banger. I mean, this is substantially smaller than walking around with something like this. Boom. They both do series, but this one is a gigantic tube and this one is a slick, 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 slick little saga. The button itself, if I had to review this, I, I love the hand feel. I, I like the button. It's squishy. It's a very squishy, very firm press on the button. It sits flush with the housing of the mod, so you can't really even feel anything on there. It just sits so nice and flush. I could see maybe holding this backwards and not knowing where the button is. Why isn't it firing? Oh, button's on the other side. Plenty of power, plenty of wattage. And uh, yeah, okay, this is really good. I'm really glad I had this series RDA sitting around because for a hot minute, all I did was vape series. That was it. All I wanted to do was vape series. How much watts? Uh, I actually don't know. Here, hang on. Let's find, let's figure, let's do some, uh, let's see if I can do uh, the Ohm's, Ohm's Law calculator. Oh, just as good, same as I remember you forever. So if we're doing 8.4, let's be conservative. And let's say that this is a 0 0.3, which I believe it is. Um... It looks like uh, 235 watts. If this is 8.4 volts and we have a 0 0.3 on here, we're pulling uh, 28 amps from the batteries and 325, three, 235 watts. It's unbelievable how warm and flavorful it is. Not every liquid holds up to series very well, but man, B Dwayne's Mango kills it on series. Kills it. Voltage drop, yeah. Voltage drop, of course. J Money Land Shark. It's probably not quite, it's probably not quite 200, and, you know, 235 watts that's that is crazy 235 watts i could see this being at least 200 watts at least 200 watts listen i did the math let's see even if we're being conservative and we say 7.4 volts this is still a 0.3 so it's still over 100 watts over 150 watts easily it says 186 watts if the voltage, if we're counting for 7.4 volts at a 0.3, damn, well over 100 watts, well over 150 watts. And that's it. Like, that's the cool thing about vaping, man. You, you, there's no wrong way to vape. There's no wrong way to vape. I've say, I say this too much, but the only wrong way to vape is to smoke a cigarette. This is just as legitimate a way to quit as this is, and that's the great thing about vaping, and that's why I believe in vaping so much because it's so versatile that anybody, whatever you're looking for, dude, we got it. We got it. You want hot builds, you want series, you want cooler vape, you want warmer vape, you want more flavor, you want less flavor, you know, you want a mouth to lung, you want a restricted lung, you want a direct lung, we can do it. We can do it all. Whatever you need in vaping, we got it. And I have talked to plenty, multitudes of people that quit cigarettes with a sub tank, that quit cigarettes with an RDA, that quit cigarettes with a series RDA. Some people vaping didn't land for them, didn't hit for them till series arrived. And that is quite a thing. So I guess if I had to hand out some banana stickers for this shit, I don't know. It's real slick. I mean, it's real cool. It's real palmable. It's series, so it's not for everybody. The button is squishy, 
but that's to be expected from a mechanical. I feel like this is at least worth eight or nine banana stickers. If you're into series, this would be a 10. If you're not into series, don't, maybe don't venture into series if you're not into series or do it. Like, what am I, the boss of you? No. Evods. Yep, Gunny quit with an Evod. And that's perfectly okay. That's, that's completely acceptable. As I said, the only wrong way to vape is to smoke a cigarette. I like this. I like this a lot. Good. I'm glad I finally built that. I'm glad I finally got that in the rotation. I was considering like I could do a review for this, but it would be really quick because it's just a, a series tube. That's it. No bells or whistles, nothing fancy, no custom TCRs, no nothing, no protection. You are the safety. <coughs> Don't even trip, Chelsinator. Don't even trip. Happy to see you here. You quit with a Smoke 51 Sigalike. Smoke 51 as well. Redfern. Smoke 51, bro. Smoke 51 life. Okay, that's rad. And I'm glad I set that up. And that's a review for a thing. <sighs> that's just a review for a thing that never got a review. So, yeah, good stuff. I love a good series build. Well, if I may, uh, I think I'm going to uh, Torque 56 from Halo. Dude, Torque 56 from Halo was legit. Fishy. People are hella chatting all over the place. Let's go check in on some hella chats before we go check in on some hella news. Let's see what's going on over here. And hang on. It has to load, you know. There's technical problems here that are going on. Uh, let's see, Suarog, Frank Neal, very gracious of you. Ranger Rusty, holy crap. I want to say thank you to all the cool kids for being there for each other. I've been having a rough time lately, and the cool kids are always there with a kind word or gesture to bring my bring me out of my funk. Hey, cool kids, love you. Fucking Ranger Rusty, hell yeah, dude. The cool kids rule. Like, there's there's just no way around it. We're just awesome. And, and, I'm, and I'm overjoyed that you're a part of it, Ranger Rusty. Miss Bagpipe says... Monday was your Aunt Laura's birthday. Oh, she would have been 77 years old. Throw her in the birthday song or she might haunt you. I will because I she would. Aunt Laura. Aunt Laura. I was just talking to Brian the other day about Aunt Laura. We were, we were fondly, fondly reminiscing, uh, reminiscing Aunt Laura. Uh, Omicidal Vapor 206. That's very gracious of you. Hella to the rad. Five years combustion free at the end of this month. Thank you for being a huge, huge part of my vaping journey. <laughs> Hell yeah, Omicidal Vapor 206. Five years without cigarettes. Five years, dude. Can you imagine? I mean, could you have imagined when you were neck deep in cigarettes, just chain smoking Marlboros from a carton? Did you ever think, did you ever go, hmm, maybe in 2022, I'll be five years cigarette free. I guarantee you did not. Or maybe you did. Maybe you are clairvoyant. That's cool, homicidal vapor. But hell yeah, dude, five years. That's awesome. Fishy, fishy in with the hella chat of the beast. Appreciate you, Philly. First, for fishy. First off, happy anniversary. Hell yeah, happy anniversary. Second, with the way work has been, I'm surprised I got out of work on time to make it to the vlog. Third, hey, hey, love you. Fourth, more seatbelt. More seatbelt means more safety. Everybody knows this, right? Uh oh, you said it, Fishy. Why'd you say it? Maggots? Maggots. The maggots are falling like rain. Maggots. 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 You know, one thing I really love in my life is guar. The second thing that I I really like in my life is uh, news and advocacy. Okay, wait, hang on. Connor Smith had a hella chat in there, so let's uh, let's pop back over. Connor Smith, how long does one 60 mil bottle, three milligram, last you? And what would you do if your batteries died on a night out 
and you had nothing to vape. Connor, these, these, these thought-provoking questions. Uh, a, a 60 mil bottle of three milligram nicotine would last me, I don't know, if I was just vaping one singular bottle, probably a week, probably a week, maybe not even quite that long, but probably about a week, I guess. I was talking to someone on YouTube recently was talking about how they vaped 100 mils a day. And I thought, I don't even know that that's possible, bro. How do you vape 100 mils of e-liquid a day? Even cloud chasing, even I could cloud chase my office all day long and every breath would be a vape. And I don't think I could get through 100 mils. I think a 60 mil bottle would last me a week. Let's say a week. Uh, if I had no vapes and no nothing, look, I, that's it. I'm just done. I'm just done with nicotine then. I'm not vaping nicotine. I'm not using nicotine that night. I, I would not do it. Three to four days for a hundred mil urn? Three to four days for a hundred mil. Am I way off base? Yeah, a hundred. maybe if you were on series. Frames Janklin says he can go through a hundred mils in three days. A hundred mils in three days. I don't know that I could go through that much e-liquid in three days, but maybe I haven't, maybe I do, maybe I can, and I just have never, I just have never like measured it. Yeah, I would probably say something like Zin, or I would look for some sort of nicotine pouch, some sort of nicotine alternative. I would go look for a jewel. I would go look for uh, a, a, a can of General Snooze. I would go look for some Zins. I would probably go look for something. 30 mils a day is not that hard to do. Apparently I don't vape. <laughs> Apparently I don't because I'm going to, I'll get back to you on this. I'll get back to you on this. Okay. I'll get back to you on this because I want to know how long it would take me to get through a 60 mil bottle of liquid. If I was just vaping one thing exclusively, the, the problem is I do not vape one thing exclusively. Not even a little bit. Yeah, there should be a timestamp. Hopefully there's a timestamp for, for the Dixon coming off. I guess I am just a poser. Damn it. I didn't think I was, but I guess I, I guess I am a poser. Like I look at it like it's taken me like I haven't vaped through this this week. I filled this up on Monday. It's Thursday. That's how much I've been using the stubby. I vaped like three mils of liquid out of it. I grab this. I'll grab like some other things. I'll grab some pods and I'll vape them all, all the time. I, I have a hard time. I guess I'm bad at, at keeping track of my liquid. I'll, I'll get back to you. 30 mils in eight hours. That is, uh, that seems impressive to me. Cherokee Vapor says three days for 100 mils of coil turd liquid. Dang. Metal Steve says he vapes 60, mil, 60 mils of 12 milligram a week. I could probably go through a 60 mil of 12 milligram. Maybe not in one week. Maybe it would be a little bit longer. Maybe it would be a little bit longer. Dang, I, I need to do some liquid science. There's some liquid science that needs to happen. Um, but now... What needs to happen is, uh, I'm going to play the bumper again. Yeah. News and advocacy, yeah. So I'm going to tell you to do testimonials. Of course, I'm going to tell you to do testimonials. Anywhere, anywhere you can do testimonials, please do testimonials. Hello. Welcome. You're just in time for the news and advocacy. This is the most important part of the stream. So please do testimonials wherever, whenever you can, tell your story. And I do want to give a quick uh, Newsy-related update. Uh, shout out to uh, Vape Around Magazine. Uh, this episode of uh, Vape Around Magazine. Thank you, Don Dovna Kitten. Appreciate that follow, Dovna Kitten. But in this episode, uh, this issue of Vape Around Magazine... They had uh, they did a little grim green thing, grim news indeed, right next to ripe vapes, and uh, 
they, they did a, a little article. They, what they basically did was took my Twitter thread of when I got my third strike and kind of turned it into an article. And I thought that I just thought that was very cool. They didn't need to do that, but they, they helped. They helped. That's right. Hang on, hang on. Even though it's not really going to matter, let's put it up here anyway because we're going long with the news and advocacy. It helped. And this was very cool. And they didn't need to do that. And you guys got featured as well. Like anybody who was tweeting at me and retweeting me on Twitter, like uh, Mr. Uh, Vape and Law Guy there, Big Y, Jason, Mallory Gates, Tom Lyford. You guys were tweeting at YouTube and you made it into this article. And like I said, they just took my Twitter thread basically and turned it into an, into an article. Uh, and there was a, a quote here from Allison from the World Vapors Alliance who suggests that the whirlwind of scare stories from the U.S. could be spilling over to sites like YouTube and encouraging them to take action against this content. These videos are invaluable. Uh, misinformation on vaping is spreading across the globe and we need a platform where we can share our experiences and our truth in reality. There's a lot more questionable content that I would not want kids to have access to. So why is YouTube letting that slide while adding to the misinformation surrounding vaping and nicotine? Let's take a moment of silence for all the deleted and banned videos in the past. Uh, and I hope that YouTube moving forward can find a way to make these videos accessible to adults while protecting children. Yes, the easiest way to do that is to just age gate them. That's it. Just age gate them. That's all you need to do, YouTube. That's all you need to do. But thank you. Like, that was a cool thing to do, Vape Brown Magazine. You didn't do it. You didn't need to do it, but you did, and I appreciate that. I've known Vape Around Magazine for a very, 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 very long time. Very, very, very long time. Just, it's a great, great, great group of people there. Great group of people there. Um, so, what I one of the things I really wanted to mention tonight is, uh, in addition to this, you're going to see my desktop. It's a rocket ship. In addition to this, uh, so this is uh, good news for Australia. Some po some potentially really good news for Australia, dude. Uh, Sarah Game, uh, MLC in uh, Australia. I'm excited to be introducing the Controlled Substances Amendment Bill on Wednesday. This bill will save the lives of adult smokers and starve the youth vaping black market of dangerous unregulated products. Two million Australians currently headed toward death from smoking related diseases, yet current vaping protocol means less than 2% of vaping products are brought through regulated prescription. This is a ridiculous failure. It makes no sense that it's nearly impossible for adult smokers to access a much safer regulated product containing only solvent flavor and nicotine. It makes no sense that the unregulated black market of illegal imported vapes containing unknown chemicals is flourishing. It makes no sense that only a handful of pharmacies are able to stock prescription vapes, making it highly inaccessible. Why is the Melanacunas government making it next to impossible for smokers to access much safer regulated vaping products? We need to fix this urgently. Hell yes, Sarah Game. Hell yes, Sarah Game MLC. So if you are in Straya, Track down Sarah Game. Find her on Twitter. Follow her. She's introducing some legislation for your country that could be could be really really cool. Could com could completely reverse the prescription model that you guys have in Australia. Completely. Face meat. I see you there. Uh, uh, cream pie. Cream pie to you. Cream pie to you. Cream pie to you. So uh, yeah, Australia, you got you got some stuff coming up. You got some new new stuff coming up. Now over here in the United States of America, I wanted to mention this really quickly and read through it because uh, you know one of my one of my one of my nearest and dearest friends, Danielle Jones, President Casats, no big deal. She was the TBN co-host while TBN was a thing. TBN might be a thing someday. I'm not a hundred percent sure again, but. She wrote a little uh, a bit here for Filter Magazine, how to read the CDC's confusingly presented youth vaping data. 
CDC has always presented the youth vaping data and youth vaping numbers in a really, really weird way that doesn't make any sense. Let's read now from Filter Magazine the words of Danielle Jones. I don't think I'd ever heard of the annual National Youth Tobacco Survey conducted annually by the CDC, but in 2018 it crashed into my life as someone who'd finally been able to quit smoking after 10 years through the use of nicotine vapes. That was the year Scott Gottlieb, then commissioner of the Food and Drug Administration, responded to the National Youth Tobacco Survey data by announcing that youth vaping was an epidemic. This announcement threw vaping into the headlines, making it public enemy number one as panic over youth vaping exploded. A rash of restrictions and bans have followed. Since then, I've made it my personal mission to scrutinize the data from this survey in order to effectively advocate for the products that saved my life. She goes on to say, over the years, I've noticed a fundamental misunderstanding of the National Youth Tobacco Survey data, largely how they're represented by politicians, media professionals, medical professionals, the media, and the general public alike. This year's release of the National Youth Tobacco Survey data brought some of the worst and most inaccurate reporting I have ever seen, with numerous media outlets reporting, for example, that more than one in four teenagers used e-cigs daily. We've seen that. You've seen that. Come on, Ranger Rusty. You've seen that. One in four teenagers uses electronic cigarettes daily. That statistic is dead wrong. Dead wrong. What the data actually shows is that 2.5% of youth used e-cigarettes daily, not 25%. How could, a news mess, how could a news outlet mess up this badly? Looking at how this information is presented by the CDC, the source of the errors is not hard to comprehend. The CDC states that more than one in four teenagers who reported using e-cigarettes used them daily. Clearly, that's nothing like the one in four teens nationwide. The practice of reporting percentages of percentages may be common among academics and researchers, but the average American just expects to be told a flat rate. In order to understand what percentage of all teens are truly vaping, you need to do your own math. You need to do your... CDC makes you do your own math, a necessity for which most people are not prepared and which could be avoided if the CDC simply did it for us. Why won't the CDC do this math for us? They reached out to CDC for a, uh, a statement. They got a statement back. I'm not going to sit and, and read this whole thing. But Clive Bates the former director of action and smoking on health UK told filter that he disputed how CDC was defining prevalence, clarifying that it can be defined with reference to any total population and nothing that it is the responsibility of the writer to be clear and avoid this confusion. If they are presenting frequent use as a societal problem, then the proportion of kids vaping daily is more relevant than the proportion of teenagers vaping daily. He said, so, in an effort to clear up this confusion and help people, especially journalists, understand how to accurately report these statistics, she says, I've created a visual explainer and tutorial on how to read the CDC's data. My hope is that not only will this prevent inaccurate hyperbolic headlines or perhaps even result in some corrections, but that it will also spur some people to pressure the CDC to present each year's National Youth Tobacco Survey in a more re readily comprehensible manner. Dude, Danielle Jones, well done. So let's take a look real quick. There it is. So how do we accurately read the CDC's National Youth Tobacco Survey data for 2022? Number one, all students versus current users. So we're looking at the blue highlighted area. It says the first thing to understand about this chart is what we were is that we are looking at two types of percentages. One is among all students, which means it is a percentage of all the U.S. students. The second is among current e-cigarette users, which means only those students who reported current vaping. Do you see where the problem is? 
already? Let's look at the green area. Percentages of percentages. That means that the percentage outlined in green are each a percentage of the highlighted percentage above. They are not percentages of all students. Do we see this in the green? You see the green up above where it says 9.4%. And then down below it says 27.6%. How did they get that 27.6 number? 27.6% of 9.4%. So purposeful, purposeful, Jenkins, purposeful. They make it deliberately confusing. Deliberately. Number three, let's look at the orange. Are we sure? Look carefully at the data again. The total number of students who reported current vaping is 2,550,000, which is a percentage, which as, okay, sorry, I'm, I apologize, which as a percentage is 9.4% of all students. Daily e-cigarette use is reported as 27.6%. That can't be a percentage of all the students because we already established that only 9.4% vaped at all. It means that the 27.6% of the 9.4% of students who vaped, vaped daily. If we do the math, that means 2.59% of all the students vaped daily, not 27% or 25% as they would have you believe. Easy to double check the math. Let's look at the purple area. Uh, let's do this test to confirm easily. Math A over here, so I'm trusting Danielle's math skills. What is 27.6%, the percentage of those who vape daily, of 2,500,000, the total number of students who vaped at all? That number is 703,000. The CDC rounds their numbers, so that lines up with the estimate of 700,000 kids, meaning we are reading this data correctly. Percentages of percentages, for some reason, is how the CDC chooses to portray youth vaping numbers. So we have 2,550,000 youth vapors. Not exactly. Those are ever use. So once in the last 30 days, twice, three, five times in the last 30 days, any use is considered regular use and current use is considered current use. But that current use is a percentage of the 9.4%. Do you see where this is going? It's weasel words all over the place. It's gross. It's it's grimy, grimy tactics. This is the new math. Yeah, CDC math. I don't know why they won't just say it. I don't know why they won't just say 2.5% of youth are vaping. In the United Kingdom, when they report on their youth vaping, they say things like 2.59% of all students vape daily. Well, this is more than we would like, it's certainly not alarming because if 2.5% of students in 2022 are vaping every day, these poor kids have a, you know, a habit, they have a nicotine habit and they're using it every day, 2.5% of high school students. When I was in high school in the 90s, cigarette smoking was over 40% prevalence. 40% prevalence in the 90s were for cigarette smoking. And now in 2022, we have a moral panic around under 6% daily vapors under age. It's not scary. It's not scary at all. It's especially not scary when you put it in the context of other risky things that kids are doing that they probably shouldn't be doing, like binge drinking alcohol, having frequent unprotected sex, have smoking cigarettes, you know, smoking weed. They smoke joints at a higher rate than they vape nicotine. These are just facts from the CDC, but... Let's definitely come down on nicotine vaping. Let's definitely ban that despite youths doing other riskier things at higher frequencies. It, it becomes so shockingly transparent, 
shockingly transparent. Why do they care? 2.5%? Who cares? Who cares? I care zero. I care zero because in the 90s, I was smoking cigarettes. And if vaping didn't exist, I, I, I guarantee you, like with the biggest guarantee I've ever guaranteed that these youth vapors would absolutely be smoking cigarettes if vaping didn't exist. I don't know how anybody could think otherwise. I don't know how people can look at that and go, well, they wouldn't have been doing anything if vaping didn't exist. They wouldn't have been smoking and they wouldn't have been vaping. They would have been doing nothing. And then you can go, oh, well, why, why does all the CDC National Youth Tobacco Survey data tell me that they would have been smoking otherwise? I hate it. All right, here's the thing. We're out of time, but I told you we're running long. So let's do, uh, let's just reset the Matt Sinister countdown so we can get through something else here because there are, uh, uh, there's some FDA whistleblowers. Hang on, I'm, I'm missing a, a screenshot, damn it. Ah, uh, feck. Uh, oh, here it is, here it is, here it is. Let's put it up here. Boop. So we're going to uh, be reading a few things today from the American Vapor Manufacturers Association. They had a they had a Twitter thread about this, and I'm not going to read all of it, but we're going to read a few things. So the Reagan Goodall Foundation was recently hired by the FDA, by FDA, by Robert Califf FDA to do a review of their processes, more specifically their PMTA processes, their uh, Center for Tobacco Products, these processes. Robert Califf got into office and just this was one of the first things he did was get the Reagan Udall, Reagan Udall Foundation to investigate, for lack of a better term, the FDA. And what they found was kind of surprising. I mean, not kind of surprising for anybody in this space, but kind of surprising just overall with how poorly and how badly food and drug is being run. They set up an anonymous portal so that any FDA employees could anonymously go onto this portal and express their disenchantment, their, <laughs> their disenchantment with FDA. I have a few of these uh, whistleblower quotes right here, and we're just going to go through a few of them here. There is a big AVM thread about this, and they include much more, much more. But we're just going to do a few of uh, a few of my favorites. Uh, one anonymous FDA employee said, uh, "The so-called leaders do not solicit feedback from the actual reviewers. Instead." listening to a few of the loudest ducks who are not the experts in any of the specific disciplines. This is referring to people that work at FDA that review PMTAs. Their job in the Center for Tobacco Products at FDA is to review these PMTAs, and they are saying that the leaders don't solicit feedback from actual reviewers, instead listening to a few of the loudest ducks who are not experts in any of the scientific disciplines. FDA, proud FDA, regulating on the best science available, right? And unreasonable workload slash deadlines, micromanaging the selection of reviewers without allowing rotations, burning out many top performers. In addition, instead of listening to the people who have actually done reviews, the leadership continues to listen to a few of the loudest ducks who had not conducted many actual reviews, which added bureaucracy and more roadblocks for our reviewers. If we're wondering why it took FDA like literal years <laughs> to review some of these PMTAs and why they resorted to the fatal flaw where they could get rid of millions at a time, this is pretty telling of what goes on behind FDA closed doors. Oh, you wanted one more? I got one more. The goal of the PMTA program is to authorize tobacco products that move down the continuum of risk from harmful products to less harmful products, yet limit youth initiation. 
I feel we have lost our way in the PMTA program. Both industry and the Center for Tobacco Products have had many challenges with the outcome of the court order where CTP was not prepared for the influx of applications and then changed midstream during the year and industry scrambled to submit submissions without a final rule from CTP in terms of what to even submit. Changing the goalposts? How many times have we talked about FDA changing the goalposts? Do dozens of times. Dozens of times. Even from the very first deeming regulations that came out in two 2016, 8816, they've changed since then. It's nice to have it verified, albeit anonymously, from actual FDA employees. Do I need to do it? Do I need to do it? F the FDA. Uh, but wait, there's more. Uh, we got two more here. A and there are a bunch. There are a, a mountain of these. And one of the reasons I think, at least this is what I learned from Alex Norcia, is this is all unsubstantiated. So the idea that these are anonymous comments sent in by FDA we can see that they're anonymous comments sent in by FDA, but until any of these people are willing to go on the record, I don't think a big news media outlet, CNN, whatever you watch, Fox News, MSNBC, ABC, NBC, CBS, I don't think they're going to pick it up because of, because of the anonymous nature of these comments. Yep, Chelsenator, yep. 100%, uh, I've been hearing about this, constantly had a job interview the other day. They will not hire you if you use any type of nicotine, including vaping. Including vaping. No nicotine. They're nicotine testing employees. For nicotine? Nicotine. When people find out how harmful nicotine isn't, God, I hope they feel foolish. I just want everybody to feel the most foolish. Oh, there's more. Staff is also constantly being retasked to the newest hot topic and is never allowed to finish anything. After 13 years, there are still no foundational rules in place for manufacturing or reducing harm. Yes. This is something I have been calling out the FDA on for years now, that they've had 13 years to set up any bare minimum regulation guidelines. And here we are 13 years later with still nothing in place, nothing. We've had a few tobacco flavored, big tobacco manufactured garbage vape products released. And then that's it. That's all they've accomplished in 13 years. In 13 years, they couldn't get their shit together? Are you kidding me right now? All of these will just make your rage beyond belief. They all just make your rage out of your face hole. Only guideline, must taste like an old shoe. Must taste like tree bark. Uh, and then the last one I liked that I pulled that says, uh, politics are being permitted to drive the science and even limit or alter science based decisions. There is also no strategic logical plan to address issues in a reason based order. We are constantly being asked to focus on fixing a leaky faucet on the Titanic as it sinks. Too much time is spent on managing public perceptions rather than doing the job that needs doing. One of the things I find very reassuring with all of these anonymous whistleblowers from the FDA is it just reinforces everything I've thought about the FDA. Even just look at that last one, politics, driving the science, altering science-based decisions, fixing the faucet on the Titanic as it sinks, spending time on managing public perceptions than doing the job that needs doing. It seems like FDA spent more time more time enforcing against companies rather than just doing the fucking job. Just 
Use the best available science and regulate these products. Like that's your sole function. It's not your job to laser focus the truth about vaping ads at kids. It's not your job to enforce on small and medium sized businesses through the PMTA process. Oh my God, Mitch. F the FDA. What has happened? Whoops. What has happened to your organization, Mitch? Uh, it's unbelievable. This is damning. This is really, really good. I hope more FDA employees feel the, uh, feel, feel the, feel the confidence to speak out and say things like politics are taking over the science. Uh, they're changing the science. We're spending too much time focusing on dumb shit than just doing the job and saving people's lives. There is clearly a continuum of risk. People are at the FDA are clearly listening to the loudest ducks. People at FDA who actively work in the PMTA process are saying that we've lost our way. We've lost our way in the PMTA program. Both industry and CTP have had many challenges. FDA is a mess. FDA is a mess. Yeah, they've ruined their credibility, tribal Buddha. They've ruined their cre credibility. FDA has ruined their credibility. CDC has ruined their credibility. It's they're getting to the find out part of fuck around and find out. It's like when you constantly erode the public's trust in your institution, why on earth do you think they're going to believe you when it comes to important things that you might even be right about, but it doesn't matter because your trust is eroded. It is gone. FDA, CDC, both. Oh, there's vaccine hesitancy. Jeez, fucking Christ. I wonder why. Probably because of your organization. Ah! Yes. The FDA. So we're going to leave it there. Thank you, Matt Sinister. Uh, I appreciate you, brother, letting us go a, a little bit long tonight in tonight's uh, in tonight's news and advocacy. I'll put links for stuff that I talked about on the Twitch stream. I'll put them on grimgreen.com, and they will also be on the replay on YouTube. So if you're watching this right now on YouTube, boom, description, links to literally everything I talked about. I'll go check in on those super chats now and take a little bit of a breather. <sighs> Crazy, man. FDA is messed, messed up. Uh, we had Connor. We had the Late Night Vape Show resubscribing for two months. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. Connor, thank you so much. Fishy, thank you so much. That's it for those super chats right there. Right now, I think is a good time to take some breeze tones. I was literally just thinking this in my head. Literally just thinking this in my head. Take a deep breath. Let's hydrate. Let's cheese our advocacy milk. Okay. I want to do that. Uh, we haven't hydrated with Adam in a while. And uh, I'd like to hydrate with Adam. So let's have some uh, hydration nation here. Yeah. Yeah, Adam, appreciate you. Appreciate you, Adam. Hydro homies, unite. There is a sponsor of this vlog. It's this company right here, The Coldest Water Bottle. I think they sponsor at least 19,000 other YouTubers and influencers. So, of course, they're going to sponsor me. I'll put a link somewhere. You can use the code GRIM. Get your own freaking coldest water bottle. It's a sticker palette, and it keeps your water crispy, cold, fresh all the time. I love it. Okay, okay, okay. Let's do something real quick. Uh, I'm hoping it will be real quick, but it probably won't be real quick. And I don't even have a bumper for it. So, no, I can't even fake it. F the FDA. Let's listen to Mitch again. Contest time. Who, 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 who is F the FDA and why did they hell a chat? Yeah, uh, F the FDA, you, you just hella chatted five bucks. Appreciate you, F the FDA. I, I like your message. 
I like your name. I, I, I like that. I like F the FDA. I think that's a, it's a good name, especially on this YouTube. Like you get X or this YouTube, this, the maggots are falling like rain. Maggots. Maggots. This is not a guar related uh, contest. Let's do a contest real quick. Does everybody have an email open? I want you to craft an email. Just write an email right now and in the, in the address, put contest at grimgreen.com, okay? We're doing a contest. We're doing contest at grimgreen.com. I hope everybody's ready. I hope everybody's ready. Got an email up? Yep, you're gonna email me directly, contest at grimgreen.com. Let me make sure that I got my uh, tab open here. Spectacular. Doodle doodle do doodle doodle do doodle do 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 maggots maggots J J scan welcome first stream you picked a good one you're here right in time for the contest did you know did you know that you're here for the contest okay we're doing a contest right now so you're gonna email contest at grimgreen.com you're gonna email your answer to contest at grimgreen.com the question of the day is this is going to be difficult this was a difficult one we did this on a build stream uh, a few weeks ago and I want, I want to do it again just to see if anybody was paying attention uh, but this is the question how many vapable things are on my desk literally right now meaning I can just grab it and vape it How many vapable things are on my desk right now? How many immediately vapable? Nothing I'd set up, nothing I'd refill, just immediately vapable. How many immediately vapable things are on my desk right now? Send your answers to contest at grimgreen.com. How many vapable things are on my desk right now? I have an answer. Uh, we'll do a count as well, just to verify my answer. But, uh, you know, send them on over. Send them on over, baby. In fact, let's uh, let's do this real quick for some uh, trivia, for some, for some uh, contest music. Let's see. Uh, is anybody correct yet? Uh, nope, nobody's correct. Nobody's correct yet, but there's a lot of answers all over the place from six, Pam, six. Let's see, uh, six, uh, 22, that's a, good, that's a good guess. 15, eight, 14, too low, you guys, too low. 21, 27, 34 is getting closer, 39 is getting closer. 72 is way too many. Earn, that's too many. Dusty, that's you're pretty close, buddy. You're pretty close. Uh, 17, 17, 13, 8, 7, 4. Four vapable things? Four. Who, whose stream you think you're watching right now? You're watching a grim green stream. You think there's four vapable things on my desk right now? I am offended. <laughs> I am offended by that. <laughs> 869, no, no, that's not correct. 41, sorry. Sorry, uh, Miles Black Yoshi is not 37. Uh, let's see, there was, oh, oh, hang on, hang on. I think I think we have a winner. Hang on, I think we have a winner. It just dump down, yep, George. George. Where, George. George is correct. Uh, hang on. I just lost him. George. George. George S. You got it. Uh, I'm emailing you back right now. I need a photo ID and an address. Uh, George is completely correct. George guessed. 
Let's do the. Let's just do a count real quick. I'll do a count and we'll, we'll see. Um, I'm going to show you everything. One, okay. These are disposables. One, two, three, four. Okay. Get those four out of the way. So we're up to four. Ready? Just there. Five, six, seven, eight. Eight disposables on my desk. Five, six, seven, eight. Eight disposables. Nine, 10, 11. You don't even think you're ready for this. You have no idea. 12, cross, 13, calmia, 14, 15, 16. Okay. Uh, hang on. It's an accurate. I'm gonna get. I need to get you an accurate count here. An accurate count. But George, you're correct. What was that eight? What were we up to? Eighteen. Nineteen. Twenty. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. Twenty-four. Twenty-five. Whoops, shit. Eight. Hang on, hang on. I lost my count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two pods on my desk. Did I count that right? Four, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. So between pods and disposables, I'm already up to 32 vapable things. 32 vapable things. 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, hang on, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53 vapable things on my desk. 53, George, 53, congratulations. Everybody undercounted, everybody undercounted. The step, the step is disqualified because uh, it's cracked. Mm, I don't think so, I don't think so. 53 vapable things. Now what I'm gonna attempt to do is grab every pod and vape them all at the same time. <sighs> <sighs> Couldn't really even get anything. No, that doesn't work. Although that flavor of like boule bolu and strawberry and guava, like all kind of mixed together, that was that was actually pretty delicious. 53, George. 53. Unbelievable, right? I didn't I didn't even know. I didn't even think about it. 53. Congratulations, George. How many pods can I fit in my mouth at the same time? See, they all have Two. Two. That's the most I can do. Let's see. Maybe I can get three. Can I get three lungy guys? Not bad from pods. You know, there is an old video that I think I had to delete off of my YouTube called the ultimate e-cig vape. And I grabbed everything on my desk at one time. And this was back in the day when it was all like stick batteries and little atomizers and cardamizers. And I lined them all up and it was like 12 e-cigs in a row. 
I hit it all. It was great. Congratulations, George. Uh, you won uh, a medium flat rate box. That's it. Medium flat rate box for the vlog. I'm going to write your name on here. I'm going to write your first and last name, George S. I just need a uh, photo ID to prove that you're old enough to do these things that we're doing and uh, an address. can be anywhere in the world. I'll get it to you. Unless it's Germany. I have a really hard time shipping to Germany for some reason. And I don't know exactly why that is. But uh, congratulations. Congratulations, George. You're killing it. That's amazing. A recount? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Here's the thing. I know I have 30 pods. That's easy. 30 pods. Then I just have to count the mods. You really want to recount? <laughs> Is this Maricopa County? What are we doing? Recounts? Dude, believe it or not, yes. Where the hell did it go? Believe it or not, yes. It has liquid in it. It's got a fully charged battery, I think. Oh, no, it's dead. I'm going to charge it. Uh, I was rocking it super consistently, crazy consistently, but it finally died. This coil head has lasted uh, over a year. Over a year. And that's just what I have on my desk. Exactly. Remember, like, remember that FDA got millions of applications, millions of applications, seven, eight million applications of Fervate products. I got 50 on my desk. I got, I, I could give one of these each to a, to a cigarette, someone who smokes cigarettes. That's too many. I'd like to know how many Bogan has on his desk going at a time. I'd like to know how many Mike Vapes has going on his desk at a time. I'd like to know how much Jay Hayes has going on his desk at a time. I'd like to know how much Matt Cully has going on his desk at a time because it's probably more than me because he's, he doesn't, he does only pods. He doesn't do any like Boro, RDA, RDTA, like any like really hobbyist stuff anymore. So I imagine his desk is just pot, just a mountain of pods, <laughs> 200, <laughs> 200 setups going at the same time. That's how hardcore Jay Hayes is. And here's the thing that's excessive. It's completely excessive. If I was just Nick, the consumer, I could imagine having like maybe up to like eight or nine, like really cool setups and maybe some different toppers and things like that. The idea that I have 50 vapable, 53 vapable things on my desk. And that's not even including like no man's land. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I have 15 other mods over here. Four Boro bridges, four RTAs, five RDAs, two sub tanks. That's not even vapable. That's just sitting. That's just sitting doing nothing. It's excessive. It's excessive. Oh, does <laughs> Tim, that's hilarious. <laughs> I don't vape the disposables. Uh, I, I vape them purely for science. Uh, I opened up this Hive Onyx for no real reason other than just science. I thought I should taste this. Pretty good. You know what it tastes like? It tastes like not smoking cigarettes to me. You know what that tastes like? Freedom. That tastes like fucking America right there. What's next? Good contest. That was a good contest. I like doing that one. Um, oh, here we go. Good times. And one thing I do not want to do tonight is combine the retro vaping and the liquid tasting. I want those to be two, two specific things. Mech mod guy, you want that to be you? Here's the thing. You want a mech mod? I'll send you a mech mod. Dude, I got fucking mech mods coming out of my asshole. Just email me. Email me. Mech mod guy, email me. Slide in my DMs. You want something? Shit, I'm more than happy to get rid of stuff. <laughs> Got a lot of vape mail. We got we got leftover vape mail from last week that we didn't get to do, and we have extra vape mail from this week that we did get to do. And I think, oh, this might not even be a vape mail thing. Um, did my wife order this? 
Yes. Oh, okay. I thought this was from Jake Scrapwood. So shout out to Jake Scrapwood because he sent me some uh, Bones coffee, some decaf coffee. And my wife and I, we both drink decaf coffee. We both loved the crap out of that coffee, Jake. I can't express to you enough how much, how much we like that coffee. And so we just went and ordered some from, uh, from Bones, from Bones Coffee Company. So what did we get? What did Casey order? We got more Highland Grog. Fuck yeah, decaf Highland Grog. We got some, uh, we got some more decaf strawberry cheesecake. Can you believe that? Strawberry cheesecake flavored caffeine. That's kind of unbelievable. And then we got some uh, Jamaican Me Crazy small batch medium roast Jamaica Blue Mountain uh, decaf. Shout out to Bones Coffee for having rad decaf coffees. I'm a decaf guy. I, 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 I just drink decaf coffee. I like it. I, I was too dependent on caffeine, and uh, it was not good. It was messing with me. It was messing with my senses. It was messing with my life. Is there anywhere this can go? No, I don't want to cover up any of those. I don't want to cover up any of those. Maybe I could cover up KVTV. Like, maybe I could cover up Clown. No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding, Clown. Fuck yeah, Bones Coffee. Any other decaf drinkers in the house? No? Coffee with the point taken out? Yeah. Yeah. That's just how I roll, you know? I'm like, it's, like, uh, it's like I'm a zero milligram vapor, you know? Oh, let's open this one later. Let's open this one now. We got some uh, UL action. It's just been uh, seemingly raining you well pods from the sky recently. You don't drink coffee at all, Sexy King Phil? Good on you. Hey, that's good. Uh, nighttime. I like to drink decaf coffee at night. I like drinking decaf coffee during the day. Um, I was a huge coffee nerd uh, prior to my career as a, as a vapor. <laughs> And uh, I loved it. I love everything about coffee. I, I love the romance of it. I like everything from like the processing of the green coffee and roasting curves and temperatures. And I like it. I get, I get swept up in it. I like the idea of, you know, I loved at Starbucks having like the single origin Costa Rica coffees or like a single origin Rwanda coffee. And you hand roast it just beautifully and you let it degas and then you taste it the next day. It's like, I, I love coffee and I just get really swept up in it, but I can't, I don't do caffeine anymore. I just don't. And so I like, uh, I like decaf. Give me some decaf. Oh, this is a repeat. Oh no, it's not. Oh, okay. So I'm not trying to sound disappointed. Let's open one. Let's set this up right now. I can include this in my, uh, uh, you know, here's the thing. I like you well, a lot. I like you well, uh, drip, drip coffee. That's how I make it a drip coffee. Uh, I spent a number of years after Starbucks doing nothing but like French presses because you know, hoity toity coffee guy. And I ground up my coffee for a French press and I would brew French presses every morning. And I thought, I love French presses. I'm so, yeah. Um, and then I just immediately like that became too much of a process. And so I, uh, I just went to drip. We got a Mr. Coffee and I like, a, I like a good drip coffee. When I go to Starbucks, generally what I get is a drip coffee. It was, it's my favorite thing. Uh, I just like ordering it. It's another freaking cocoa. It's another freaking cocoa from you. Well, we just had some new cocos. We got another cocoa. Let's see if they're cross compatible with the other a three coil heads. Thank God. Lights. This Cali burn has lights. Look at that. Look at that. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. It just vapes so good. I just don't know why it exists. 
Why why did they do the Caliburn A2 and then the Caliburn A2S and in the same year months later did the Caliburn A3 and then the Caliburn A3 AK3 pod system and then they're probably going to do a Caliburn A3S and an AK3S I feel like if you have any Caliburns then then you've tried them all. If you've tried an A2S, you've tried the A3. If you've tried the G2, the GK2, you've tried the A2, you've tried the A3. They all vape the same. Unless you're talking about the Caliburn X, and the Caliburn X is <laughs> bad. Bad scene, man. All right, Cocos. Well, listen, I actually think the lights are pretty cool. But it's upside down if you're right-handed. They vape good. Those coil heads vape good. This is actually a this is like a three week old coil head. I'm in the middle of my A3 review right now. Delightful. Open the box on the desk. Dean, you don't get to boss me around like that. I'm gonna open other things now. In fact, I'm gonna save that one for last. Now, Dean. Uh oh, uh, we got some Canadian. Those sound like coils to me. Oh, whoops, I'm sorry. I tore your note in half. Oh, God. Good job, Grim Green. Good job. All right. Let's tape this back together. Uh, hey, Nick, I wanted to send you some of my favorite fla flavor banger coils. I did not make them, but I stand by these as if I did, in fact, make these. They're simple alien coils, but they are passed before they're wrapped, but they are pressed before they're wrapped, which gives them a badass look, especially when they're being glowed. I don't know if you tried these before, but they are made by GM coils. Okay, yeah, he works closely with QP. Uh, funny story, yeah, like the Lethal RTA, uh, he's slapping your favorite fanger, flavor banger. Enjoy the Dragon Scale coils. Pearson, dude, Pearson, thank you. I got some dragon scale coils from GM coils, courtesy of Pearson. Here's a funny thing. Oh yeah, those are cool. Yeah, they're like, uh, they're, they look polished is what they look like. They look like polished aliens to me. Kent's, Kent's done polished aliens. It's not quite like a God coil, but thank you, Pearson. Thank you. I'm going to keep this with your name so I can always give you proper credit. But Pearson, thank you. And funny story about GM coils. Do you know who the first online retailer to stock GM coils was? That was your boy Grim. I'm not saying like I don't want to like elude that I discovered GM coils, but I gave GM Coils his big break, and I started selling his coils first because I thought they were really good coils. And he made me some custom Grim Green coils that we sold on the site for a while, and they were great. And I like GM, and I'm glad he's doing well. And this is... Huh. Vape snake. Uh, uh, Eric, the creator of the vape snake, I'm overjoyed you're interested in my product. You can use my device to connect your billet box or other DNA devices to eScribe for boost settings. Warmth settings, depending on the device, make custom boot logos, add a puff counter, update your device, and more. I have a crappy tutorial on my website. But overall, it connects to the five little holes beneath your display connector, unless you have a Delro, uh, which many do buy my device for, but is not recommended unless you know what you're doing. It's much more difficult. The only thing I have to say is be careful removing your display connector and make sure the connection is stable before doing an update. If you have a mod with a DNA chip turned around or upside down, be sure to turn the vape snake around or it won't connect. Whoa. Okay. So, Eric, fucking, okay, thank you, Eric. I'm Vape Snake, I'm not 100% sure 
exactly what he's describing to me, but it seems to be an interface between your DNA board and then, the, and, and then a micro USB. There's a micro USB on one side. And then uh, here, can I show you this way? Vape snake. I don't quite understand what this is for. As far as I know, you can connect your DNAs directly to a computer and use the eScribe software, correct? Is this for DNAs that don't have the ability to do that? This needs to go in the pin connector. All right, vape snake. All right, vape snake. I'm gonna put you away for safekeeping for now. All right, shit. Let's experiment uh, with a vape snake at some point. I do have some DNA stuff that needs uh, that needs updating this. All right, shit. Yeah, vape snake. I'm not 100% sure what that does. Billet box. It's for billet boxes because they don't have the. Uh, I guess they don't have. They don't have a USB, right? So I would need to take this board out of here before I could use the vape snake. I get you. I get you. So you'd have to z z z take this out, take your board out, plug that into your board. Then that becomes a USB-C for your computer. It's for a doubt. Uh, there you go. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, Ranger Rusty. Yeah. I'm looking at my billet box now, realizing I don't have a micro USB port. I don't have a micro USB port. Sorry, Ranger Rusty. That was not the right chat, but you, you get you get what I was going for. All right. Hey, well, that's cool. Authentic billet boxes don't have USB ports. Yep. This must be super authentic because it really doesn't have a USB port. All right, cool. You know, I used to love, ugh, love messing around with eScribe. It was so fun. I liked making my own logos and my own, like, you know, five clicks on, five clicks off and logos. And there was, like, Grim Army and Grim Green ones I did all the time. It was good times. Michael. 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 <laughs> Oh, shit. Cherry Pine Mods. Oh, shit. Cherry Pine Mods. Fuck yeah, Cherry Pine Mods. This is a uh, a new Boro. The finest mods made in Oregon. I, I like this logo. I like that little Cherry Pine. Can I put this somewhere on here? Yeah, we'll see. Look at this. It's wrapped like a little like a little package. Like a little birthday gift package. Believe it or not, this is a Boro mod in here. Yeah. Yeah. A Boro mod. And it's so freaking tiny. How is this even a thing? How is this even? Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's cool as fuck. It's, uh, it's, you know... It's a little, uh, I don't know. I'm going to say it's a little uh, snow cappy. I mean, I don't want to say speak out of turn here. There's a stormtrooper there. Grim green logos down the front. Banana sticker fire button. Boro goes in here. 18650 goes right here. It's, it's just an open back sort of... You know, if I had a custom battery wrap, it would look pretty cool in there. Which I don't. Where are all my batteries? <laughs> oh, they're all in the 57 mods I have across my desk. Okay. Well, I don't have a cool custom battery wrap, but I'm assuming I can do something like this. Yeah. Just throw an 18650 in there. Lock and nut on top. Sweet. It's mechanical. And you can kind of see. I don't want to give away all your secrets. They can see there's a there's the mechanical switch right there. I'm interested to see 
how this is going to go, like how this is going to work in the hand with the fire button being down here. I'll probably end up holding it just like this, like I do with a lot of stuff. Locking nut, 510 pin. Fuck yeah, cherry pine mods. That is pretty slick. And I like th the size of this is crazy tiny. Like, it's narrower than the Mission Astro. It's smaller and narrow. <gasps> Does that say Cactus Cooler on the bottom? Bro. Bro, what? That's cool as hell. That's cool as hell. There's the Astro. Uh, hang on. I, I, I hear my animal. I hear my Schneeko, uh scratching at the door. I didn't know she was outside. So I'll be, I'll be right back. Here's some uh, BRB music. That's so crazy loud. Uh, okay, anyway, yeah, my, my, poor, my poor schnauzer was outside in the dark. I didn't realize she was she was outside in the backyard. That's okay. Brought her in, gave her some dinner. We're good to go. We're almost done. We're almost done with that beer. But wait, there's more stuff. Ugh. This one's crazy heavy. This one's crazy heavy. Crazy heavy. Ah! Whew. Vendetta Vapor, thank you for that subscription. F the FDA. Hell yeah, F the FDA. I like that. I like the rage. Whoa. Okay, hang on. This is uh this is pretty dope. Hey Grim! says, I uh, hope this package finds you real, I uh, uh, hope she finds you well. I really hope you enjoy some of our best-selling e-liquids from Australia. Our new brand, Gnarly Juice. Keep doing what you're doing. Being a sick cunt. Don't let YouTube or other haters ever get you down. You're a legend. Oh, thank you. Kind regards, uh, Bead, Director uh, Juice Freak in Australia. Our label's say oh my god as that is all we are allowed to sell here in australia we have mixed all these juices to three milligram for you as you requested okay zero milligram oh my god not omg i thought it said omg oh my god let's see what we got from gnarly juice let's see what i can show here on the internet which is not a lot of things but this is a large amount of juice and stickers D does anybody need any gnarly juice stickers? I mean, that's kind of a sick, like, that's pretty rad. <laughs> that's kind of dope as hell. Gnarly. All right, gnarly. Let's put some gnarly stickers in the gnarly packaging. Put this gnarly stuff over here. 
there's there's three brands in here. There's Hyperion Bay, there's Gnarly, and there's Sticky Fingers. Neapolitan, Milk and Cereal, Melon Madness, Straw Nana, Blueberry Custard Pie, Blueberry Raspberry, Chocolate Milk, Strawberry Yogurt, Peaches and Pineapple. Maybe we'll pick uh maybe we'll pick three of these to try tonight. How about that? And you can eat these. Like I always say, you can eat them. Yeah, okay, this is a whole mess of liquid, that's all. That's what we're looking at. All right, gnarly. There's a t-shirt in here. Let's pick, I'm gonna pick three flavors at random. One, two, three. I'm just gonna pick three random ones. We're gonna do these for the random liquid tasting. You don't get to see which ones until it's time. I just picked them randomly. Beetle's juice, colada spinner, banana ice cream, that sounds delightful. Peaches and pineapple, okay, rad. Oh, I love some, I love some stray in juice. I love it. Thank you, Gnarly Liquid from uh, Straya. I had some other Strayan liquids up on the random liquid tasting tonight, but that's okay. We got these three. I haven't even looked at them yet. Haven't even seen what flavors they are. We're going to we're gonna vape them. We're going to vape one of them tonight. But wait, there's more. Ho if there was a meat pie flavor, I, I would be into that. Like, I, I would be into that. I want to try it. Why would I not want to try a... A, <laughs> a meat pie flavor. <gasps> Dude, this is a good mail, you guys. This is a good mail. You know what this is? This is a dot AIO. Uh, this is a dot AIO from uh, Skunk Works. S K N K works. Yeah. Skunk works. Uh, and I know what's in here and it's going to be awesome. Uh, it's going to be cool. So this is a dot AIO dot AIO compatible serenity now. And it is peak. It's made of peak. It's made of peak. And it's got, uh, you know, uh, gray peak plastic doors. I don't know if these are peak. But this, I believe, is peak. And it's a dot AIO. Buttons on the back. Battery goes in the front. I mean, it's a carbon copy. It's just a dot AIO. That's all it is. And it's got some sick panels for it. Skunk works. Oh, why am I showing it to you here? Let's show it to you here. Yeah. Look at that. It's cool. Skunk works. It's cool. Is that the button? Nope. Yep, that's the button. It's cool. That's crazy lightweight. Let's see. We got uh, a peak. We got a peak drip tip. And we got a peak uh, replacement panel for the inside. Yeah, this can become peak as well because I have peak here, so that can go on there. And clear doors, so you can see that hot peak on peak action. Cool, that's cool. I'm gonna put this peak drip tip on here. Boosh, external O-rings on that drip tip. Skunk Works coming through clutch. Coming through clutch. That's cool, man. I think this is cool. I'm excited about it. I actually do not vape a lot of dot AIO stuff because fuck dot mod. Fuck that company. So I, you know, it's whatever. I just end up not vaping uh, some dot AIO stuff, but like I have some good dot AIO stuff. I got that dot pioneer can go in here. I have a few cool dot things. I don't know. Did they do a weird detonate detonator style vice? 
I really li- same homicidal Mike, dude. I love the aesthetics of this. I like the peak. I like the gray. It's got like a slightly like, I don't know. Whoops. I don't know. It looks like it looks uh, it doesn't feel durable, but it looks durable. You know, I think that's important. It looks durable. (laughs) It looks like this is something that you'd be vaping and driving your Jeep around, you know. Okay, let's try to keep this all this stuff together. Shit, man. Dude, we got some cool stuff. We got some undeniably cool stuff. Not limited to the cherry the, the cherry ripe. Is that what I should call it? The cherry ripe mods? Cherry pine mods. But wait. There's more. These are coils for sure. But I just don't know who they came from. I mean, it says Duchess coils, but... Oh, we got some literature. Nick, I just want to thank you first and foremost for all that you do. I know your response is going to be, I'm just a guy who wants to help smokers quit deadly combustible cigarettes. Yeah, but honestly, you do so much for us every single day. I know I'm not the only one that is grateful for you and what you do, but also having the privilege of getting to know you and have you in their life. Nick, you're a huge part of this family, and we love you so much, brother. With all that said, this pack contains a lifetime supply of coils that you can use for personal or for the build streams. Hey, Nick. Hey. Love you. Hey, Duchess. Love you, bro. Please make sure that you powder your furniture, oil your veggies, drink your night milk, and poo bear your jelly. Yeah. All those things. I do the I do all those things on a daily on the daily. Uh stay metal as fuck, dude. Your neighborhood asshole, Duchess Coils. Bro. Well, thanks, Duchess Coils, for hitting me right in the feels. And this is a whole mess of coils wrapped, re-wrapped up in my own Grim Army tissue paper. I don't know if I need to get all these right now. Oh, here we go. Oh my god, Duchess. You're insane. You're an insane person. This is all the coils I will literally ever need. Are you serious, Duchess? Well, listen, I'm not I'm not one to hoard the wealth, so uh, if there's uh, other people in need of some Duchess coils, I mean this is a this is the lion's share of Duchess coils. Do, do you see this this mass of coils? What up, Duchess? So much, so many coils. Thank you, Duchess Coils. Thank you very much. I know, I feel like I got a $2 boosh box from Duchess. I need, a, I, need, I need a better container for these. I don't know how you fit them all in here, bro. I don't know how you did it. Sick. And you know what? I'm going to keep this. I'm going to send this back to you. Yeah. I'm going to send this tissue paper back to you, suck a fish. And you can't stop me. Okay, okay. So much mail. And then, dude, this has been a really, really good vape mail. Like, besides the lion's share of Duchess coils that I just got, liquids from Australia, uh, the skunkworks.aio, the cherry pine mods, boro AIO, and now... And now, and polished GM coils? Get out of here. That's awesome. And lastly, I've seen uh, a few choice people uh, have a video up for this or, or or have shown it off already on the interwebs. But I think, if this is what I think it is... Yes. Oh. Yep. It's the uh, Reload Vapor Ammo. What color is this? Not sure. We know the Reload Vapor packaging. This is the Reload Vapor Ammo, which is to say it's a Boro. 
It's the first Reload Vapor Boro. Top down, looks like there's an adapter for it. It's a whole lot of airflow. Holy shit, that's a lot of airflow. Let's go up close. So much airflow. Look at that airflow through the bottom. That's kind of bananas. Oh, look, I got 11. Look, 111. 111. Front fill. Is that airflow on the side? Then what is that? Okay. I mean, that really looks like where the airflow is going to be coming from. Where does the juice touch your wicks? Oh, that's where the juice goes in. The juice goes in here. Is that even possible? No, that's where the airflow has to go because the juice goes... I am so fucking confused by this. I am so fucking confused. It's just some more guar lyrics. All right, sick. Well, shit, let's, let's do a build stream next week, I guess. And uh, we'll do some hot reload building action, the reload ammo. It looks like it's a drip down from the top. It looks a little uh, linkish from Wicda. Cool. It's cool. That's a, that's a cool Boro so far. Obviously, I haven't vaped it. Man, I wish that was the airflow. Why isn't that the airflow? Fuck, that's good. Okay, well, there's airflow pins. There's also, uh, looks like I got some spare. Oh, integrated uh, drip tips. Okay, so there's a peak in, uh, integrated drip tip, black integrated drip tip. Yeah, they look like this. Sort of matches the gnurliness of that ammo. I know, I know. It needs a 510 adapter, Aerodans. I know. Set it up. <laughs> Let's set it up right now. No, that's what Tuesday is for. <clears throat> I got Tuesday build streams for a reason. So many things on my desk right now. All right, uh, and there's, let's see, there's a matte black. What color is this? Stainless, hopefully? Yeah, stainless matte black, which means, look, one of them is going to end up in a boosh box. There's just no way around it. There's just no way around it. See, my retro vaping is going to be so boring now. I feel my retro vaping is going to be so boring, you guys. So boring after that really, really good vape mail. This is one of the most best, most best mail hauls, I think, in the history of mail hauls. Like, if I had gotten a beer or something in this, that would have put it up over the top. We got Australian liquids, a mess of Australian liquids, a mess of Duchess coils, some GM coils, a, a, an interface chip for billet boxes to eScribe software, a new Reload Vapor Boro, a new Skunkworks Dot AIO, and a Cherry Pine. That 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 Reload might end up right there, Mister Cherry Pine. And it says, <laughs> I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see what it says in there. On the inside here, there's some engravings. Uh, it says, not the sub-tank mini. Not the sub-tank mini. A sub-tank mini. A sub-tank mini. It's not the sub-tank mini. It's just so cool. It's just so small. Small boros. Don't be afraid of mechs. Who's, someone said in the chat they're, they're afraid of mechs. Don't be afraid of mechs. No reason to be afraid of mechs. I mean, there is a reason to be afraid of mechs. You need a healthy fear of batteries, I think, to use mech mods properly. But uh, once you get the basics down, there's really, you got nothing to be worried about. 
You got nothing to be worried about. Sick, dude. Sick as tits. What a great vape mail. What a great vape mail. And we set up a Cali burn. Okay. Well, shit. Let's go check in on some retro or some retro vapes. I'm going to check in on the super chats, but if there aren't any, then we're getting get into my really boring retro vape. Really boring. I mean, really very boring. Yeah, sick. George. Good. To, thanks. Glad to see you. He says, hashtag replay crew still going strong. Fuck yeah, George. Contest winner, George. Thank you, George. I appreciate you very much. And congratulations again. Congratulations again. Did I just do that? I already did that. I just did that like three times in a row. Let's get to the super chattingness. Uh, let's see. Wired talk with Big G. Uh, he did some cheering and he used 500 bits to say Addy Tooney said UPC codes was shown in one of the boxes. Think the first. Yeah. Yep. It was. Uh, it was. W oh, there was a UPC code on the box. Mm. UPC codes uh, are less worrying than QR codes less worrying than QR codes, but I really appreciate that heads up. I'm going to preview this stream before I upload it to YouTube. This will be on YouTube uh, Saturday, Saturday morning, I think. Uh, but thank you. Thank you, Wired Talk with Big G. And thank you, Addy Tooney. I appreciate you. I think more than you realize, Addy Tooney, more than you realize. Uh, th appreciate those Cheers, uh, Vendetta Vapor. Thank you for subscribing, F the FDA. And then Fishy, one more with the... the Super Chat of the Beast. Apparently, today is the 41st annery, anniversary. <laughs> annery? Apparently, today is the 41st anniversary of the Motley Crue debut album, Too Fast for Love, released November 10th, 1981. Holy shit. I was only five, five years old when Motley Crue's debut album came out. Little did I know that just a few, like, Seven years later, I'd be listening to Kickstart My Heart and Dr. Feelgood, like ad nauseum. Fuck yeah. Shout out to Motley Crue. Shout out to Vince Neil, even though he sounds like shit these days. Shout out to Vince Neil. Shout out to Axl Rose, too. You know, there's two guys that are still trying to tour and and, and they sound just so bad. Real, very bad. And, and honestly, like... I like this. This is a good thing. I think it's important when really talented, really skilled musicians or singers, when they reach the end of their career and it's like they just can't quite do it anymore, you know? It's like watching Dave Mustaine really try his best but not quite being able to play as fast as he could and watching Axl Rose really try to sing Welcome to the jungle, but he just sounds terrible. That's important because I think that humanizes celebrities a little bit and it makes me appreciate when they sounded good. It makes me appreciate Hangar 18 when Dave could just play like lightning. And it makes me appreciate old Guns N' Roses when Axel sounded flawless. Like you realize how skilled that person is later when they're bad at it. You know what I mean? I, I think that's important. I think that's an important thing. That's why I really enjoyed, I think I've mentioned this before, but that's why I really enjoyed Frank Sinatra sort of ending his career in my hometown of Lake Tahoe because he was, he was playing to really small crowds and he sounded terrible. Frank Sinatra sounded not good, bad. But he used to sound so flawless that it makes me appreciate that more after hearing him sound bad. Does that make sense? <laughs> okay, I'll take that. I'll take that, Tribal Buddha. He never sounded flawless, but he did. You know, for what they did, for what they needed Axl Rose for, he was perfect. Perfect. He sounded flawless. Flawless. Uh, I don't know where Frank Sinatra's from. Where's he from? Jersey? New York? Is he an East Coaster? I think he's a New York guy, right? Yeah, so he probably talks like this. He probably talks like Ranger Rusty from New York. Clemenza's Cannoli, huh? Huh? Clemenza's Cannoli. Okay. 
damn, what a, what a damn hell ass good uh, mail. Now let's do. All right, here's the thing. Now there's not a lot of hype for this. I feel like this is going to be a letdown of a retro vaping, but I'm excited about it. Really, he's from Hoboken? Jersey represent Frank Sinatra. Damn, who knew? I knew. I knew. I, I didn't know he was a Jersey guy. I thought he was a, an East Coaster for sure. East Coaster because, you know, he sings a lot of songs about New York. He's got multiple songs about New York. Leaving cakes out in the rain and things like this. Here's a really crappy retro vaping. Okay, okay. Oh, maybe my Havoc is like dead dead. I will be mad if this is like dead, dead, dead. It says it's charging. Yeah, whatever. So, do I have super chats? I will get to those right after this, right after, right after we do some really boring retro vaping. So, I decided for retro vaping stuff, I, I don't want to. I want to get away from just toppers. Like I feel like retro vaping revolves around toppers. Oh, really old RTA, really old RDA, old atomizers, old dripping atomizers. It's all toppers, you know? So I, what I've been doing lately with my retro vaping, and I'm hoping to continue this, is to set up a full setup that I used to vape. Like an old setup from years past that I used to regularly rock, that I used to regularly enjoy. And the setup that I have set up today is this. Does anybody recognize this mod, first of all? Anybody? Boop. Nobody recognizes this. Let's get a closer look. Some uh, carbon fiber on there. The Evic Primo. Does anybody remember the Joy Tech Evic Primo? Because this was and still remains one of my favorite regulated mods of all time of all time there's just something about it it's the hand feel that's what it is it's the hand feel of this device so we put this battery in here we put this battery in here we close it and it's this unbelievable here let's go up close again it's this unbelievable teardrop shape flat across the front buttons USB-C fire button but the shape of this is everything you remember the crappy door yeah the crappy door was crappy crappy door is crappy but it's st i still liked this i still liked this thing it fits like so flawlessly I'm, maybe i'm throwing that a word around a little too much i called axel rose flawless earlier it fits in your hand so flawlessly and it's one of those devices like the uh Did anybody get the, the original Vupu Argus? The original dual 18650 Vupu Argus kind of has a similar shape, slender, dual battery, like just disappears in your palm almost size and style to it as the Joytech Evic Primo. It's, it's an unbelievable mod. Unbelievable mod. Uh, it did have that classy clock on the screen. <laughs> it did have that... It did have that classy clock on the screen, but like, I like the display. I liked the clicky buttons. I liked this fire button. This is a, a hand feel mod of all hand feel mods. There's nothing better than the Evic Primo, I don't think, as far as hand feel goes. Um, and what I'm going to throw on top of it is a sub ohm tank. This is an old, old old sub ohm tank can anybody tell what this is without looking at the logo now you can kind of see the god logo in the middle this is the v god trick tank and it was like my favorite sub tank for like a year 
like a my favorite sub tank for like a year. I picked one of these up. In fact, this setup was a setup that I took to the United Kingdom. Yeah, there's the clock, baby. This was a setup that I took to the United Kingdom. I took this Evic Primo to the UK to the 2017 Vape Jam or something like that. And I picked up a V-God trick tank there. And they just called it the trick tank. And all it was was a sub tank. But it was a shitty sub tank that I really liked. There's no adjustable airflow, just fixed open airflow. The whole top is the drip tip. So this whole thing on top, like a top hat was the drip tip. And you're probably thinking, how do you fill it? How do you fill it? How do you fill it? Well, my friends, you fill it from the bottom. Can you believe this? A sub tank, fill it from the bottom. <laughs> if I can get this apart, cause the threads are old. That's how you filled it. That's how you filled it. There's no other openings. The top doesn't come off. It's all one piece. Your, your glass sits in a little ditch right here on an O-ring. You screw your coil head in. This goes in there. Oh, God, don't fuck this up, Nick. Oh, God, I fucked it up. Oh, God, I fucked it up. No, nope, I didn't fuck it up. We're going to put this O-ring back in here. Filled it from the freaking bottom. And that is so dumb. So dumb. I got this and I'm talking to the V God guys and I'm talking to uh what what was his face? Uh uh can't remember his name from V God. And he's showing me the trick tank and he's I'm I'm vaping it and I'm like, wow, this flavor, like these coil heads are pretty nice. It's just a round wire coil head and that's it. That's it. And you had to fill it from the bottom. In fact, I'm gonna try to screw this together. So when I take this off, I can actually fill it up. Oh my God. Nope, what a terrible tank. What a terrible way to fill the tank. And I fucked up the O-ring, so this isn't gonna, this doesn't even lock down on here. It's just pressure fit. So we're gonna try to fill this up. We're gonna try to actually vape this. I'm just gonna grab some whatever. Uh, how about some Turkish watermelon? Shit. It's supposed to like s fit in here and s like fit into that O-ring better. I cannot believe that's how this works. It sat down in there better. I don't know if I fucked it up or not. I know it is. It's anti-boosh. Filling from the bottom is the most anti boosh thing you can do. Is that correct? I'm going to make sure I put this in here correctly because I don't, you know, like I've been saving this retro vape. I mean that when I say I've been saving this, I continuously look at this V God trick tank. Yeah, I guess that's how it's supposed to go. I find that unbelievable, actually. Yeah, holy shit, okay. I guess that is how it's supposed to go. It's a, this is a terrible design, a truly terrible. I think I have a review for this somewhere on YouTube. Trick Tank. So I'm gonna hold this glass on here. I think it's just going to leak. It's just going to leak, but let's give it a shot. Oh, fuck me running. This is not going to work. This is not going to work. I can already feel it wobbling. Nope. Leaks. Leak. Leak nation. I don't know how this is going to work. I don't know how this is going to work. Maybe I can plug the coil head into the bottom. Let's try that uh, before we get too far. 
let's try to plug this onto the bottom and maybe you can fill it from the top, but I remember consistently having to fill it from the bottom. Oh, good luck getting that coil head off of here, Nick. That's been glued on there. Let's see what can be done. All this for a for a sub tank. Yeah, it's just a single round wire. Okay, so let's put the trick tank together this way, and then we'll put the glass on this way. Okay, let's fill it from the top. I can even put a couple of drops of liquid down the center. This is a, let's see, I got this in 2017, 2016. So figure out how old that is. Was that six years old? I guess I got enough liquid in there. In the coil head, I mean. Okay, okay. Some thread sticking out the top. Can screw this back together. I think I remember filling this from the bottom because the coil head would consistently get stuck in the top. And when you unscrewed the top, you'd pull the coil head out with it. I th I'm having a brain fart trying to remember this. I thought I remembered the V-God trick tank like flawlessly. I thought, oh, I use this forever. I don't know exactly what I'm doing. Maybe I don't, but here we go. Let's put this on the... Uh... Yeah, buddy. This is a throwback. This is a crazy throwback. No atomizer found. No atomizer found. Great. Let's really screw this down. Okay, there it is. It's a, a 0 0.3. It's a 0.3 single. So I'm going to do it at like 50 watts, I guess. Is that going to work? All right, let's try a toot. Let's try a toot of the V God trick tank. Yeah, 50 watts on the Evic Primo peak 2016. Man, that coil head tastes just the worst. Oh, don't vape a seven-year-old coil head. You don't need to. It's, unnecess it's unnecessary. 60 watts at least. We're at a 0.3. This adjusts in 0.1 watt increments. So let's do 62 watts. Cheers, V God Trick Tank Boosh. They did they, did they have bad flavor, Rob, when they were brand new? Did they have real bad flavor? Right now, it tastes like. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Tastes like tetanus. <laughs> tastes like tetanus. Tastes like lockjaw. Uh, no, it, it tastes like watermelon. Like, you know, I'm getting some watermelon from it. But the old cotton and the old coil in there, time has not been kind to them. And it tastes like, Michael Redfern, didn't you say it tasted like a shoe earlier? Yeah. That's what this is. It tastes like it tastes like a watermelon shoe. If I had to describe it, watermelon shoe. Yeah, V God Johnny. Where's V God Johnny? I used to be tight with V God Johnny. And I, I like what he's doing now. He's 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 branched out. He's doing all sorts of cool stuff now. Oh, I got an atomizer short again. Oh, no atomizer. Oh, no atomizer. Well, I guess that's the end of the trick tank. Oh, here it is. What size shoe? Like a John Fetterman size shoe, like a 14 and a half wide. It tastes like a watermelon 14 and a half wide shoe. <laughs> 
tastes like not okay so not so much shoe okay as shoe laces like you did like you took your shoelaces off your shoes and you coiled them up and you just steeped them in e-liquid yeah and then you pull them out of the e-liquid and then you stretch it tight and you just kind of go like across your mouth that's what this tastes like watermelon shoelaces That was a slick little jellyfish. You see that? Who O go in the other O? Skills. The V God Trick Tank. Already. Already paying off. Is this your shoe that I'm vaping? I think this is your shoe that I'm vaping then, Cherokee. Nothing. Not not even a good one. Damn it. Yeah, I got a hold of that one. I pushed it. It could have been a jelly if I had a, like a warehouse in front of me. Hey, that was one. That was one and you saw it and it went around my camera lens. So score. So we're basically vaping Cherokee Vapors uh, size 14 and a half. Watermelon shoe out of the V God trick tank. Shout out to V God. Like they're not around anymore. The trick team isn't around anymore. It was like a, a really passing phase there with trickers. There's still a few trickers. Garrett vapes a lot, uh, on, on Instagram still does a fuck ton of really good tricking. Uh, my other favorite Instagrammer tricker guy, who's not so much of a tricker. He's just a He's just a good vape dude on Instagram. Drew Drips. Everyone should go follow Drew Drips. He, he's just one of my favorite accounts. He's charming and funny and he, and he does good videos and he does tricks and he does uh, pods and I like his content. I really like his content. So shout out to you, dude, Drew Drips. You're the new V-God. Well, that's it. I'm going to keep vaping the watermelon shoe because... I'm not going to just toss a perfectly good coil head. Their, v, their mech mods were not very good, Tribal Buddha. I, I, I'll agree with you. I have a V-God. In fact, one of my most popular videos on YouTube, which blows my mind, is the V-God Mech Pro video. For some reason, in, in 2017, I uploaded the V-God Mech Pro video, and still to this day, it outperforms all other reviews that I have. People watch the V-God mech video more than anything else on my YouTube. It boggles my mind. Boggles my mind. I was tight with the V-God guys. I really liked all of them. They were all really nice guys, and, and I liked hanging out with them. And if, if I saw V-God at an event that I was going to, I was like, cool. I'm going to get to hang out with Johnny. I'm going to get to hang out with Danny Lolo. Like, I'm going to get to hang out with cool, fun people, cool, fun trickers. Damn, it was fun. It was a fun, for a while, it was really fun. It was stupid. Like, don't get me wrong. It was dorky. It was corny. It was cringe. But fuck off, dude. We had fun. V God, yeah. Did V God ruin it for everybody? Chasing clouds and flavor reviews? I see you there, buddy. All right. Well, we got some watermelon shoe. We got some uh, Cherokee Vapors. Like, uh, what did I say? Fetterman size? <laughs> Fetterman size shoes in there. Delicious. Delicious shoe. Let me tell you, that is a delicious shoe. Uh, I think we're winding down to the end. Yeah, we're way past seven. It's almost 730. So Fettermelon. Holy shit. John Fettermelon. These are the John Fettermelon shoes. I'm not a registered Democrat, but I like John Fetterman. I don't know what it is about him. He just hits with me. He seems like a cool dude who would like, if you were hanging out with him and someone bumped into you and like tried to start some shit, he would have your back. I think that, I think that's why I like him. Almost done with the peach Duke. And what we're going to do now to wrap this up is a very random liquid tasting, but not before we get into this. 
Get into Twitter. Who said that? Who said get into Twitter? Yeah, Sex King Phil? <laughs> Hell yeah, get into Twitter. Follow me on Twitter, man. Twitter's an adventure. Elon Musk is just running the house and, and it's crazy. Everything's crazy on Twitter now. You can just buy verification. Eight bucks, you get blue check mark. You get blue verified for eight bucks. It's lost all meeting. And then, so he didn't just do that. He didn't just go, oh, it's eight bucks for verification now. Now everybody can be verified. Just pay eight bucks. Of course I'm going to do it. Why would you not? You get verified for eight bucks, but then there's like a second verification now. So he made it pay to play. He took a free platform and made it pay to play. Thanks. And then he's like, I'm getting rid of the verifications, except now there's going to be double verifications. So you can buy a verification. And then if you had an existing verification, you're like this legacy verification where now on some of your tweets and on some and on your profile, sometimes it has an additional grayed out sort of verified check mark thing. It's goofy. It's goofy. I mean, I'll be interested to see if uh, he just either runs Twitter into the ground, which very well could happen, or he could make it awesome. And then I won't care. And then it'll be awesome again. <laughs> yeah. Verification's made up and the points don't matter. <laughs> yeah. Jump on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter. It's fun times over there. <clears throat> okay. Let me, uh, let me get, let me see some of these super chats that happened. Uh, yeah, that's right. We learned about Motley Crue, Fishy. Uh, Rob, woot! Thank you, bro. Thank you for that resubscription. Very appreciate that. Connor had another one. It said, at what point do you change your rebuildable coils and how do you get so much life put on them? Uh, I find even a fresh install, they taste like trash. Doing three to four second pulses at 25 watts dual coil with like a 0.5 of a second in between one pulse and another. Yes, that is, you're, you're pulsing them correctly. You, you want to get rid of all hot spots. Get rid of all hot spots, Connor. What I do is uh, strum, a strum. I don't have any coils right now that I could show you this technique on, but when you install fresh coils, take your ceramic tip tweezers and gently brush, brush your coils. Pulse, brush, pulse, brush, pulse, brush, pulse, brush, pulse, brush. That's the system. You work out all the hot spots, you're going to be good to go. Uh, I've used coils for a really long time. My wife used a pair of M Turk aliens for a year, a year, one year, 12 months of use from one set of coils with regular, uh, you know, every week we re wick it, clean them, glow them dip them in water, get them all nice again, re-wick those bitches, and then just keep vaping. I, I, I don't know how to get long life out of them. No hot spots. Don't run them too hot. Uh, regular re-wickings. Uh, make sure your juice isn't, you know, super loaded up with sweetener. That's going to hamper the life of your coils, in my opinion. And, you know, there are coil experts out there that are, are much more knowledgeable than I am. I mean, anybody in this chat, people like uh, Breeze Tones, Adam Breeze Tones, people like Duchess, there's there's plenty of builders in this chat, and uh, maybe they can give you a little bit more specific inside information, but I'll just tell you, just regular re-wickings and glowings, and we used coils for well over a year, well over a year. It also depends on what cotton you're using too. Sometimes cotton have a cotton taste that can affect the flavor, you know, can affect your, your flavor performance. I hope that helps, Connor. Hope that helped out. Uh, Georgia boy, that's very gracious of you. Grim, hey, hey, love you. Georgia boy, love you. Thank you. Congrats on the four years of marriage and uh, got joke of the day dibs on the reload RBA. Uh, we're not calling dibs right now, Georgia boy. <laughs> No, no dibsies allowed on the, on the, if I had like six of them, sure. Like when I got a bunch of RDA for vapings V2s, I let people dibs them, but we can't dibs the, uh, we can't dibs the, the ammo there. Sorry. Um, but truth is you have been so kind to me in the past year. Uh, you are the goat in my book. Love you, bro. Oh, Georgia boy. Listen, thank you, man. This is just what I'm doing. It's just what I like doing. 
I like streaming. I like helping people quit smoking. I like helping vapors vape. And I like bringing people together. And my Patreon is like the culmination of that. You know what I mean? It, it brought so many great people together. Uh, I'll just gush about them forever. But I appreciate you, George Boy. And, and you're included in those ranks of the cool kids. Uh, absolutely, Georgia boy. Dem Demented Design says, Grim Green, I forgot to tell everyone this story, but I bought a, but I bought two Pulse AIOs from a guy in the UK, and he totally screwed me over. It's been two months, and I still don't have them, and he won't pay me back. I'm sorry, Demented Designs. I'm sorry. If that happened in anywhere in the Grim Green sphere, if that happened uh, in in the Grim Army Facebook, or if that happened in the yo yo Discord, then that's that's in my jurisdiction. That's in my jurisdiction. If it didn't, then you might be on your own, Demented Designs, and I apologize for that. Uh, the other ret, that's very gracious of you. Uh, I have no right asking because I have exactly nothing to give in return. However, I'm getting my first real RDA soon. Won't you send me Duchess? Yo, you won't send me Duchess coils. I'll send you Duchess coils. Other Rhett. Listen, Other Rhett, I know you're new here, uh, but I think you've proven yourself uh, pretty pretty easily, you know, throughout the chat. Uh, from what I've seen, the Other Rhett, you're a very personable person. You get along with everybody. We, you know, we all have a fun time together. As far as I know, other people enjoy having you in this chat. So... Send me an email. I'll get you some Duchess Coils, other ret. Don't even trip, dog. Don't even trip. And Demented Designs, thank you for that subscription. Woo! And Sewer Rug, boosh all over this hella rad vlog. Keep on keeping on, folks. Thanks for the hangs tonight. Uh, I'll see you then, or I'll, s I'll see you then, or I'll see you at another time. Hashtag yo yo tendencies. Hashtag Grim Army. Hashtag chop wood. Chop wood. Ah, chop wood. Thank you, Bo Sewer Rug. Boosh all over these yo-yo tendencies. Appreciate you guys. Let's start winding this down. I think we know what time it is. I think it's time. Duchess, shirts off. Shirts off in the pit. Shirts off in the pit. Shirts off in the pit. Okay. Uh, I'm going to start up a poll here. <sighs> so, the three Australian liquids. Oh, interesting. And then we have... And then we have... Oh... Oh, uh, so I'm going to leave this poll running for five minutes, uh, not before we turn on the vote music, because if you don't vote today, then you don't get to vote. And it's funky. It's not funky. I mean, it's not funky if you don't vote. So uh, I'm not allowing any additional voting tonight. You can't use channel points to vote. It's just one person, one vote up for uh, up for elimination tonight or possibly uh, vape nation tonight. Uh, Beatles juice. We got passion fruit lemonade. We got one from each of the ranges. We got uh, some uh, Byron Bay milk and cereal. And then lastly, we got sticky fingers, Granny Smith. Okay. So here's your choices. The poll should be started right now. If you don't vote today, then you don't get to vote. Funky. Passion fruit lemonade, milk and cereal, Boosh Granny Smith. Please vote on which liquid you would like to see me vape literally right now. Passion fruit lemonade, milk and cereal, Granny Smith. Vote, 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 vote. If you don't vote today, then you don't get to vote. Funky. Dicks and masturbation. All right, stop that. That's enough of that. You can't say that anyway on the internet. As far as I know, you're not allowed to curse on the internet, okay? You're passion fruit guy, Bob? I've never, uh, passion fruits never really hit with me. 
real hard. I've never really like fallen head over heels in uh, in in love with a passion fruit, but I'm interested to try it. Look, if it happens tonight, if it just happened, it does. Delia's chopping wood all over the place. I can sense it. That seventh floor tango comes on. She's like, she's chopping wood, just chopping it. Where are we at on this poll? Oh, passion fruit lemonade is uh, taking a lead. Milk and cereals in third place, and the Granny Smith is in second place. I'm just gonna leave the poll up until the poll's done being a poll. You know, I hope everybody votes. Has everybody voted? Has everybody voted? That is how you dance. I've seen you dance. Stiff upper body, just like this. Or chopping vegetables. That could be a thing too. This doesn't roll off the tongue as well as chop wood though. Chop wood is so, chop wood, chop wood, chop wood. All right, all right. Uh, has it been five minutes? I don't know, I can't tell. Uh, I think Passion Fruit Lemonade is actually going to win this. I think Passion Fruit Lemonade is going to win. I, uh, seems like most everybody, well, Passion Fruit Lemonade taking an even bigger lead. Even bigger lead. Uh, I don't believe you have to be subscribed to do the poll. I don't think so. If that's true, then I apologize. But I think you can... Uh, that's how you... Maggots! Maggots! The maggots are falling like rain. Does the poll only work on a desktop? I actually don't know what the poll even looks like on my end. Swipe right on the hype train on mobile. Is that how it works? Yeah, Bob, he did it on his phone. He's playing Call of Duty on his PC. I should play Call of Duty. I feel like I should play Call of Duty. Maggots. Maggots. Let's go, Granny. I know. Oh my God. Granny and Passion Fruit Lemonade are tied right now. <gasps> Granny Smith just took the lead. Granny Smith just took the lead. Granny Smith just took the lead. Hell yeah, Granny Smith just took the lead. By two percentage points. That's not even, that's like, this is 39% of you voted. This isn't like 39% of the 8% that voted. <laughs> Granny Smith is really taking a lead. I like this. Zach voted for Granny. Yeah, it's time. Yep, yeah, now, now we have to have a runoff. <laughs> we have to have a runoff election. Unbelievable. Last of the Peach Duke. That beer is top tier that beer is going to be one of those like forever beers that i just don't want to be without anymore what's up shorts shorts and shirts appreciate you being here uh this is it uh granny smith has taken an, an incredible lead 42 percent. they were neck and neck the, the pink lemonade or passion fruit lemonade and granny smith were neck and neck First time here? Listen, shorts and shirts. I appreciate you being here. Thank you for coming out. We stream every Thursday right here on Twitch. Yeah, probably. Probably. Stop the vote. Stop the steal. Uh, I think we're going to end this. I think we're going to end the poll. The time is winding down. And <laughs> Granny Smith is the winner unbelievable can i put this on the uh screen i don't think i can oh that should be the poll right there uh but it's completely gone that's fine can't see it but granny smith granny smith won granny smith hella won so Let's dive into some Granny Smith. Sticky fingers, palm oil free. It's a 65-35 mix, 65 VG. 
Sticky Fingers from Straya. Oh my God. Oh my God in heaven. I was really hoping this one would win. I would have been happy trying any one of these, but I'm really grad, glad the gra grad. I'm really glad the Granny Smith won because Green Apple was a flavor that I vaped a metric shit ton of. My vaping habits went from a clove e-liquid that I hated at the very beginning, but I vaped it anyway because I didn't want to smoke cigarettes. I went straight from that to root beer. Root beer all day long, root beer. Root beer was my all day jam for a while. Uh, I switched to blueberry. I did an 18 milligram blueberry. This is all mouth to lung back in the day. And then I did 18 milligram Granny Smith and it was a liquid called Apollonia from the company that my wife used to work for, Pure Smoker back in the day. They did an apple e-liquid that was called Apollonia and it was like this green Granny Smith apple that I just love the crap out of it. Thank you to everybody that voted for the Granny Smith. Uh, the, uh, the vape that we're gonna vape it out of today is, you know, it's standard issue, random liquid tasting rules. So what I have is an uh, snow cap with an empty bottle and a uh, 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 nitrous, nitrous RDA on top. The knuckle was very successful. No, it doesn't need a nick shot. He said that uh, in Australia, they can only sell zero nick. But since they shipped it to me, they pre-nicked them all to three. That knuckle flavor is everything I wanted. Just Granny Smith for days. And if this liquid is good, which I'm not trying to get too ahead of myself... Then we'll end up putting it in the squonk bottle and it'll be something that I use regularly. But if it's not good enough, then it won't go in the squonk bottle and then it'll just never get vaped again. Yeah. Yeah. That's borderline like series. Okay, I'm going to close the airflow down to the way that I like it. All right, here we go. Here we go. I'm just going to have one, one VAP, inaugural toot, as I say. Holy shit. All right. Uh, I'm going to mute my microphone real quick like this so you won't hear anything. I'll be right back. I just want to spend some time with this liquid.
Okay. Okay. This is really very good. Really very good. Uh, <coughs> it's a... Uh, <coughs> it's not throaty. Believe it or not, it's not throaty. Believe it or not, it's not throaty. Freister, damn it, I appreciate you being here. That just, that means a lot to me. It's 3.43 in the AM, AM in UK. Freister's keeping it real. Hell yeah. It's chesty. No, it's not chesty. It's... It's a little bit throaty, but it's a, it's a good throaty. It's a throaty that I desire. It's a little bit of irritation, uh, uh, just enough to let me know that I'm inhaling something other than air. That's what I like. A little a little bit of throaty. A little bit of throaty in there, Ben Shapiro. This is a green apple, like f flawlessly green apple. It, it's a green apple, and I can actually taste like not just the fruit of the apple, but like the skin of the apple. There's like a a sweet, tart, sour thing kind of going on in here that's really Granny Smithy. You know, they're kind of sweet and tart. This is very sweet and tart. <clears throat> sweet and tart. And I'm getting like, I, I'm getting a flavor that I'm, I'm assuming is just part of the apple flavor. I don't, I obviously don't think that Sticky Fingers just did a one recipe, you know, like one ingredient recipe. There's no way that this is just green apple with PGVG and nicotine. There's a lot going on in here. It's layers of flavor. It's complex. It's like biting into an apple. It's juicy. It's almost like there's a hair of culotta in it, but just like the, the most tiny amount of culotta that exists is in this. I feel like I taste a little bit like a hair of black licorice as well, and I think that's just part of the overall apple flavor. That's being too picky because ultimately this just tastes like a crispy, juicy, juicy Granny Smith green apple. I, I loved it. M Maltic acid. Is that what I'm tasting? Is that what I'm tasting? Maltic acid? Yeah, this is really good. Really hyper good. I can't not put it in the bottle. I can't not put it in the bottle. I have to put it in the bottle right now. That it, it is tasty. It's a green apple. And like I said, if you are into green apple flavors, I, I feel like this is a winner. I feel like this is a severe winner. It reminds me, I mean, it's, it's very much the green apple flavor sensation that I used to get from vaping green apple that I don't know. Something about green apple flavors. All right. We're squonkable now. Fully squonkable. And, yeah, crackle. Plus crackle from these coils. If you like green apple flavors, this is a way to go. Uh... The, the new Deep Cuts Apple Donut is also kind of along these same lines. Less apple, much more donut. Much, much more donut. Super Donut Bakery back on that. This is just apple. There's no bakery. There's no crust. There's no cinnamon. There's no nutmeg. It's just Granny Smith. Granny Smith. You made it, Razor. You made it. I think these are Twisted Timmies, if I'm being honest. There's a good chance these are Twisted Timmies. And this apple is rocking good on this. All right, sick. Good choice. <coughs> really good choice, you guys. Damn. Damn good choice. Damn good choice. All right, let me, let me turn off the music. Let's start winding this down. I'm going to go check out the Hella Chats. How long have we been streaming? Three and a half hours? Oh my god. Oh my god. Uh, that's right. We left off with Sewer Rug. That's right. Uh, uh, Suburban Docs, thank you for following. Trip Camp, thank you for following. Delia's Hair, you didn't say anything. You didn't have to. You're just a kind person, and thank you. 
New Wave Dave said, uh, would have been here sooner. Oh, I've missed New Wave Dave. I've missed you, New Wave Dave, and I've missed your cat, and I've missed your cat stories. Uh, would have been here sooner, but my cat wouldn't unbind me from the gimp suit and let me out the footlocker. I'm sorry, your cat is still a menace and I love it. I'm here for it. I want, I want more New Wave Dave cat stories. I want more New Wave Dave and I want more New Wave Dave cat stories there. I just said it, okay? Shut up. That's, <laughs> that's what I said. That's what I said. I said it and I said it and I meant it. I said it and I said it and I meant it. Uh, and then that's, uh, that's it. That's it for the super chats, you guys. Let me uh, let me double check. Let me just take a quick look around the room. This is going to be a lot of cleaning. This is going to be a lot of cleaning, but damn it. What a great stream. What a great stream. What a great beer. What a great mail. What a great liquid. Everything was really good tonight. This has been a successful stream. Even though Flitz on you wasn't here the whole time, who knows how much better it could have been with Flitz on you here, you know? Could have been worlds better. So uh, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to take off. I'm going to take my Granny Smith with me. We're going to leave these uh, Australian guys maybe till next week. Maybe we can dig dig some more uh, Australian liquids. Uh, but, yeah, thank you guys for coming here. Thank you for being here. Thank you for coming out, and, and thank you for the continuous – support of all things grim green it, 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 you really know how to warm a guy's heart man i've been going through and really taking stock of what i've done on youtube and what i've done in the world and going back and watching and editing all of these old youtube videos and you know and remembering all of these products and remembering like that feeling that i had back in the day in like 2010 when i was just so fucking pumped about everything vaping and I, I like that feeling and uh, I want that feeling back and I, 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 I get that feeling from the vlog. And so I have to thank you guys for keeping me, you know, uh, honest uh, and keeping me excited and, and keeping me going and keeping me, you know, keep, keeping my excitement level up. You know, uh, it's it's symbiotic, isn't it? Isn't it really? Thank you, Vaping Monkey. Everybody, listen, you guys, have a great night. I love you guys. Have a great night. What a fun ass vlog. Full stream schedule next week on Twitch. We got some new Boro stuff. We're going to put that reload next week on Twitch. More Zelda on Twitch. More vlog on Twitch. And uh, and this is how we roll. So, hey, I appreciate you guys. Thank you for being here. And you mean the world to me. This industry means the world to me. I've seen it just transform people's lives. And, and that's nothing to blow your nose at. I was reassured again today on Twitter by Alex Wodak that, that harm reduction measures like this always win and that it's literally just a matter of time. And that gives me more hope than I could have ever hoped for. My mission now moving forward is I, I'm really focusing on California and I really, really want to make a deliberate effort to get Prop 31 overturned. That's my goal. I'm going to I'm gonna try to get flavors back in California. I don't know how I'm going to do it, and I'm probably going to need some help, but I have a little bit of a plan, and it's going to take time and money, but I'm really focused on California right now, and that's just where I'm at. So be focused where you are, and I'll be focused where I am, and then together, all of us together, will be focused everywhere, and I think that rules. I think that rules. Oh, birthdays. Okay, let's do birthdays real quick. I don't know that anybody had a birthday other than my Aunt Laura and the Marines. Were there were there other birthdays? I looked in the Discord and saw no such birthdays. Let me, uh, look, I'll double check, you know, I'll double check here, see what's going on. Yeah, I just uh today. Yeah, there's no there's no birthdays. There's there, there's no birthdays. The, all all the birthdays are next week birthdays. There's two birthdays next week birthdays, but there's no birthdays today except for my aunt Laura 
And uh, the Marines, apparently. Apparently, the Marines. <coughs> yeah, well, but before we focus down on California, I got to focus down on my YouTube and get all these videos edited. There's still plenty of videos to watch for anybody that's been watching videos and, and helping out and watching videos and making timestamps. And if you're on the Discord and, and you can help, I would really appreciate the help. And uh, yeah, I, there, there's no other birthdays. Queen Honey Bunny's daughter? Queen Honey Bunny's daughter. All right. Queen Honey Bunny's daughter? Uh, it's Mick's birthday today. Mick? All right. I got Mick. I got the Marines. I got my Aunt Laura. And I got Queen Honey Bunny's daughter. Let's sing happy birthday, you guys. Let's sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. I sound like Frank Sinatra. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear the Marines. Hoorah, Aunt Laura, Queen Honey Bunny's daughter, Pooh Bear, and finally Mick. Happy birthday to you guys. You know what to do. Skip around the room. 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 You know what to do. You know what to do. Just skip around the room. Okay. I hope everybody was skipping, not just the birthday people. And I still want to point out that even in real life, Poon Sauce McNasty got happy birthday sung to him, and he did not skip around the room that is unacceptable and I don't accept it. It's something I don't accept. I make him skip around the room every time I see him for the rest of my life. So you guys, thank you for skipping around the room. We're finally done. We're finally at the end now. This is a really long three and a half hour vlog. Frank Sinictra, maybe Frank? No, that's that. That was bad. That was bad. Ignore that. Ignored what I said. It, it, Ignore what I just said. One last look. We're good. Hey, appreciate you guys. Thank you for coming out. Remember that uh, vaping rules, man. Smoking sucks and vaping rules. And if you smoke cigarettes, I would much prefer if you vape and I'll try to show you how, you know, I'll try to show you how. Stay smoke free every day, you guys. Uh, be excellent to each other. The world I is a difficult enough place that we don't need to be picking at each other. We need to be helping each other out. We need to be chopping wood. We need to be oiling vegetables. We need to be giving out high fives. And we need to be, as, as Frames Janklin says, S positive vibes, crisp high fives. Uh, everybody go subscribe to, to Frames Janklin. And I'll, uh, peace out, guys. I love you. And uh, have a great weekend. Have a great weekend. I'll see you next week. Okay. Bye.